Good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street on this lovely Monday morning. So pleased this morning. What a nice day. I drove up the motorway this morning. I mean, to be fair, it was dark, but it's a beautiful day now. Much better than it has been. So um, my name's Rebecca Reed, and I'm going to be with you for the next four hours to talk about all things sewing. We've got some wonderful things coming up. So before I go through the menu and tell you what we've got coming up on air, let's talk about the early bird. So today we have got a set of three embroidery hoops, special bundle, £9.97 for all three hoops, which saves you £6, which is a bargain. So let's have a look. I'll put my glasses on so I can see. So we've got this little hoop. And this has got a four inch diameter, which is 10 centimetres. We've got the medium hoop that's an eight inch diameter, 20 centimetres. And then we've got this extra super large hoop that's a 12 inch diameter. Does it look bigger than my head? 30 centimetres. Now, the great thing about embroidery hoops is they're multi purpose. So you can use them obviously for stitching with to put your fabric in to do, do your sewing, but you can also use them for framing. So they, once you've sewn your beautiful work of art, you can then use it for framing. So this here, look at this beautiful piece here. This is framed in the large um, 20, 30 centimeter, 12 inch hoop. So you can use this to stitch with, but it looks lovely. And because it's got this screw on the top, you can just like um, tie a piece of ribbon around the top of it and then hang it up. It's a really cool piece of wall art. So you can hang that on the wall like that or just put a little nail through and hang it over the top um, now you can use these for hand embroidery or machine embroidery so i'm going to show you how to do it now the reason that you embroider them some people you know there's no rules and there's no police so it doesn't really matter but some people prefer to work without a hoop i always work with them because it means that i don't have to worry so much about the tension of my stitches. If you stitch too tight or too loose, um, it won't look nice when you take the fabric out of the hoop. Particularly if you stitch too tight, because what happens is it bunches the fabric up and then however much you press it afterwards, you can't get it out. So I would say, you know, if you don't like using a hoop, that's absolutely fine. If you're a beginner to embroidery, um, then I would recommend you do. So all you have to do is take, undo the screw, take the outer off the inner, Place the inner flat on the table. It's got to be on a flat, hard surface, surface, like that. Um, and then take the outer hoop and undo the screw so there's a bit of give in it and place that centrally on top. That's so quick, isn't it? Now what you do is tighten the screw up a little bit, not super, super tight at this stage, and now we're going to tighten the fabric. So to do that, you just pull it all the way around the edge. You're aiming for this fabric to be what they call drum tight, which is what it says on the tin. It's got to be like a drum. So you've got to have the outer hoop tight enough to be able to do that, but not too tight so you can't ease it. Then you can tighten it up a little bit more. The tighter that this is, the more give as you more you'll get away with because then you can pull your thread as much as you want and it won't pucker the fabric so now i've worked all the way round. that's really tight look lovely for stitching in when you've then finished your stitching you cut this into a circle a little bit bigger all the way around maybe um probably about two centimeters bigger around in a circle gather the fabric with a running stitch and then that will all come through to the back and you can use it to frame now if you want to do machine embroidery, it's quite important to have the fabric taut. Well, it's actually really important. But when you do machine embroidery, you do it the other way round, strangely. So you get the outer hoop, you place that face down, you put the fabric on top, and then you put the inner hoop inside like this and tighten up. And then you do exactly the same thing. You tighten it all the way round so it's super tight. So you go all the way round and then you've used this, you push this underneath your sewing machine and then you do your free machine embroidery or even if you just want to just do some normal embroidery, you do it that way round. So these hoops, for three of them, for £9.97, you get the little one, the medium one and the big one and they can be used for hand embroidery, machine embroidery and also for framing your work as well. 
Um, you can, if you're doing a big piece of embroidery, it's best really if you can have the whole of the embroidery just in one place so you're not having to move the hoop. So this is ideal for bigger pieces. That's not to say that you can't move the hoop, you just have to be a bit, little bit careful. So if you've got some quite dense embroidery and then you move the hoop so it's going to be sitting on top of some embroidery you've already worked, then you can put a little bit of maybe cotton fabric or tissue paper just to protect it. So these little hoops, these are really lovely. For, I like these particularly for framing small designs. Maybe you wanted to just stitch a small floral design or initial for somebody. They're really good size hoops for travelling with but they also look lovely as little pieces of wall art. Really nice gift for someone. And for un under £10 and you get all three of them. I mean, you know, for an early bird at a £6 saving, that's a bargain, isn't it? An absolute bargain. These as well, you can use these as Christmas decorations. So you can you can stitch something in the centre, maybe a bauble or a net or something like Happy Christmas, and then you can just hang them on your tree. What I would say is if you're going to do that, is once you've gathered the fabric all the way around like this, um, take the inner hoop and draw around a piece of felt and then place the felt on top and just slip stitch all the way around. And then if you're hanging it up, then it will be neater on the back. So there's, they're so multi-purpose and I think, you know, the fact that they're 9 97 and you're saving, that's almost, not quite, but almost half price. Now, remember, because this is our first show of the day, this is our early bird, that there's only one P&P &P all day. It's 3 95 Doesn't matter how much you spend or how heavy it is that you buy, you will only be charged that. So you've got, um, 20, well, and up until midnight tonight, you can put whatever you want in your basket make sure you check out all the time including sew machines which you know would cost a fortune to post normally once your 395 is done and you've paid your postage that's it all day so with this early bird because you're saving six pounds you've paid for your postage and some already and you saved on your postage really well in fact you've then got two pound and five pence left actually so you've saved your postage already so if you pop these in your basket so whether you're a hand embroiderer or a machine embroiderer you know they're also really good so maybe you've done um, some applique or a bit of crochet or or anything that you can applique on you can just sew that onto a piece of fabric and then that's perfect but also if you're a beginner to embroidery you know this is a really good way of adding to your stash you know it's one of those things embroidery hoops needles fabric it's one of those basic materials that you need and it's always good I usually have a selection of well I have got a selection of hoops in fact to be honest my selection is quite a lot larger than this because I keep buying them it's nice to have different sizes so depending on what you're sewing so you might start off and you've only bought the little one then you realize that your design is a bit bigger so you want the next one so as a starter it's really good to have all three so pop them in your basket that's your early bird so do check out because they are going first so let's have a look I told you we've got some good things today let's have a look and see what's coming up today so we have got at eight o'clock, we have the got to have gadgets. Oh, have I had fun playing with all of these today. Um, there's some really good things and I'm going to show you how to use them as well. Nine o'clock, um, oh, we've got the lovely Cara Ackerman coming on, who's one of my favourite guests, and she is demonstrating Debbie Shaw's rosemary bag. We've done two of her bags in the series already, and this is the final one. Really, you're going to really enjoy this one. And Cara's full of top tips about this one as well. 10 o'clock, we've got The Art of Shashko. Now, we had the lovely Susan Briscoe on a couple of weeks ago who demonstrated lots of Shashko to us. So we've got some of her books, more products, more thread and more fabrics. So there's loads um, that we've got in the hour for you there. So if you're interested in Shashko, do watch at 10. 11 o'clock, Cara's back with a brand new book all about making toys and she's going to show you how to make the linen teddy bears that are in in the show so there's a little bit for everybody there really right i have look you so we're going we're going to talk about our fantastic new split pay which is new brand new you've been asking for it for ages and ages and we finally got it to you so the way it works is if you spend 
anything over £149, but it needs to be one item, not like a whole bundle of stuff. But if you've got one item, so the reason that we've done this is this is for, we've geared it towards the more expensive products to just make it a bit easier so you haven't got to shell out all at once. So if you've got an item that's over £149, you can split the pay over three months. So you haven't got to pay it all at once. If you're buying an item over 799 which, to be fair, is going to be um, a sewing machine. Sorry, I've just got to clean my glasses. can't see a thing. I don't know what I did, but I think I put my fingers all over them. Right. Oh, that's... No, there's still something on them. So if you buy something over £799, which is going to be um, a sewing machine, I guess, then that's split over five months. So it just means that you can, you know, you can have those more expensive things, but you can split the pay a bit. But if you've got any questions or any issues and you're not sure how it works, oh, that's better, I can see now. Um, call our wonderful customer helpline on 800 001 double four double three now this is a uk based call center um it's run by gemporia who own us they've done it for years they know everything what they're doing and gemporia have been doing split pay so they will be able to explain to you how it works if you've got any questions at all right should we just have a quick look at the website so if you scroll down on the website and if you go all the way down you can see what's going to be on the show today so if you click sort by, can you see that's the one on red? And then you can scroll all the down, all the way down. You can see, if you um, filter it by high to low, you can see the items that are on split pay. So you can see we've got some of the machines. Well, since we've launched split pay, it's been really popular with you because you can spread the payments. So a lot of our machines have sold out. Um, it includes the adjuster forms, perfect for dressmaking. The, um, the metal threads, because those are the massive boxes of bundles of threads. It includes those as well. Um, look, you can see one of them there. So you pay £49.99 per month. Now, there's only six of those left. But that's a fantastic bundle. It's a really good price, because we worked it out when they were on air the other day how much they were per spool. So that's a really good price. But you may have noticed one thing that was on split pay and it is the electric scissors. Now, if any of you, and I'm sure most of you, tuned in last Tuesday when, oh, how exciting was it when John Scott came back? I was excited. I'm still trying to get them to explain the magic trick to me. I can't work out how they did that. So exciting. But when John came back last Tuesday, amongst all the excitement, um, Neil demonstrated the wonderful electric scissors. But the electric scissors are on split pay because they retail at 169.99 so therefore you can split the the price over three months so i you know i've got look at my met table i've been playing with it all this morning so i'm in a bit of a mess really so i'm just going to move a few things aside so i've watched the electric scissors demonstration from neil he's told me all about it um these are fantastic so i wanted to have a go myself because i watched him and he said oh they're really light and they don't look very light they look sort of quite heavy and bulky but they're not they're really light and they work i mean they're just like oh so exciting to use but remember because this one is um yeah that says for some reason the graphics say five split pay but i don't know why it should be three because it's hundreds it's just over the 149 this will be so the way that it works you split split the price across three payments so you pay 56 pounds 66 today and then you pay that twice again and then they're yours so it just means that you can own some sort of the more expensive high value products um but you can spread it over the three months now i i watched neil demonstrate these and i thought well it can't be that easy can it so i had a little go well, it can't be that hard. Yeah, it can't be that easy. If he did it, it can't be that hard. It, no, I thought it can't be that easy, but actually, it is really, it is really easy. So, what I've got a piece of leather. This is real leather. This isn't PU that Neil was doing. This is real leather. And we've got some lines drawn on long, because what I wanted to see, because he did it so fast, I couldn't see whether or not you could cut in straight lines. So, luckily, this is already charged. Remember, with with these electric scissors, it comes with a rechargeable pack, so you can use them cordless, which is really useful if you, you know, you're not near a socket or you want to take them into a different room. But you can also, but you can also plug them in too. 
so you, I'm just gonna let's move some more things. You can plug them into the power as well. So you know how annoying it is when something runs out of charge and then you have to wait for the charger. I've got a glue gun, whether I, it runs out of charge and then I have to wait for the hours for it to charge up. This you can plug into the mains and it will use. And then all you do, it's got a little red button on, you just hold that and it does it. You don't, you don't actually really need to read the instructions. So you just, I have did it now, because if you keep them flat on the surface, it does help, it's flattish to get a nice line. So the line is already drawn on here. Right, I'm going to show you. So if you keep them flat on the surface, can you see how accurately I'm sewing across this line? That's so loud, isn't it? So if you were cutting out dress patterns, what I would say is I'd put my fabric down flat like they do on the sewing bee. Put my pattern on and put some pattern weights. Or you could pin it a little bit, but not too close, because you don't really want to go through this with pins, through pins with it. You can then cut quite accurately on the line. So if you're cutting something, you know, that is a heavier weight, like a leather or PU, or even something that's lighter weight, where you don't want to pick it up, because once you start picking up fabric when it's got a pattern on it, it starts to distort. But with these, they're actually... And... I counted, and they do 1,200 cuts per second. I had to count it a few times to be sure, but it is 1,200 cuts per second. So these are made, these blades are made from tungsten steel, which means they're very strong, very durable, very long lasting and very sharp. But you can cut through loads and loads of layers. But you know when you see people cut dress patterns and they lay them out flat and then they put they use a rotary cutter. Now I've done that. I don't I find that really tricky. I use my rotary cutter for with the ruler for cutting straight lines, but I actually find it quite tricky cutting curves with the rotary cutter. Probably is just practice. But these electric scissors, you know, if you were doing lots of dressmaking, look, and if you if you don't go too fast, it's very easy to cut in a straight line or cut accurately so you can see how I'm cutting along those lines that's absolutely accurate now say I wanted to cut through several layers so I cut wanted to cut through two layers easy well it can cut it can even cut through a cutting mat as you may have seen on Tuesday but I'm not doing that because I think because um, cutting mats are precious but look, it'll cut through four layers as well. Remember, they are safe. Um, if you if it goes through your fingers, you won't cut your fingers. You do have to be careful, obviously. The cutting blade is right down inside of here, which is why it won't cut your fingers. But obviously, you know, if there's children around or really little fingers, you know, do be careful. But if I'm cutting, you know, if you're cutting fabric with a rotary cut and you put your hand there, is that's the one big no-no, isn't it? You'll end up um, cutting through your fingers. But with these electric scissors, if you hit your fingers by accident, look, no blood. So, look at that, still got fingers. So, this is the first time we've offered the electric scissors on split pay. So, I would say to any of you quilters, dressmakers, bag makers, home sewers, you know, for cutting through things, you really, if you take it slow, keep the blade flat on the surface, you can put your hand close by because you won't cut your fingers. You can cut really accurately. I mean, you can even hold the edge of the fabric down with your fingers. Well, I I just cut you. I was amazed because I've seen Neil demonstrate them a few times, and I thought, mm, I'm. I wonder whether this. I wanted to see for myself whether I could cut a nice curve. If I wanted to cut out a dress pattern, would I be able to do it? And I didn't quite believe it would because they look. They don't look like real scissors. They look a bit sort of clunky, like you're going to get sort of jagged lines. But I am amazed. I said this morning, oh, I'm not sure that I want to demonstrate these because I've not used these before. I said, well, I'll have a go. Well, honestly, two seconds later, I said, I'm definitely doing it. Look at that. I mean, that is such a neat curved line. And when you look at the blades, you don't think that's going to happen. So, for me, this is a gadget I've never had. I would definitely, definitely want to own them. I mean, it's great that they're cordless and it's good that as well, you know, and I, I said before that you've got the, um, the ch you can charge it up, but you can also plug it into the mains if it runs out. Apparently, you can cut with them eight hours a day. So, you know, if you've 
for people who've got a shop or a business who are cutting lots of fabric, that's fantastic because you could, <coughs> you know, if you've got to be cutting half metres or fat quarters of fabric, you can do a lot. <coughs> if you wanted to cut hexes and you wanted to cut, say, six or eight different hexes at the time, you could place your hexy template on top. And because you can put your fingers very close to them, you know, you can actually cut really accurately because you don't cut through your fingers. See, look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? I like, and what I like is the way that you can hold a piece down with your fingers and cut it because that makes it really useful. But when you, if you're using a rotary cutter for random cutting like this without a ruler, you have to be very careful. So remember, if you buy these today, three, it's the split play option over three months. £56.66 pence today. So you can have these today, you can buy them, £56.66, and then by Christmas you've paid it off. But this is a real investment, and um, I was sceptical because I couldn't believe that they were as good as Neil was going on about, but honestly they are, because, you know, you know. So next, very quickly. So we... We showed the website on the machines a little bit earlier so we could show you how the split pay works. Um, I just wanted to say that the Juki overlocker, which is really, really limited, we've only got four left. So because this is over the 799, you can split pay this over five months. Now I watched Gary demonstrate this a few times. Oh my, it is an amazing, amazing piece of machinery. So it is, £219 per month over five months. So if you've ever thought about you'd want to have an overlock, if you do dressmaking or home sewing, they are fantastic. And one of the biggest issues that people have with overlockers is the threading. People say, well, I spent half the day threading and the other half the day sewing. These air threaders, that's not an issue. It's all been worked out so that you can easily, if you watch... Um, Gary, if you search back on YouTube, if you see how he does it, it's ever so quick. But we are, I just wanted to say, in case you'd seen those at the beginning, they are very limited now because um, you are using our split pay option. So what shall we do next? I want, well, I'm going to do the Lit Lion. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I actually want one of these. I'm thinking maybe I could just take one with me. So this is the Prim. It's a steam iron. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the packaging because it's always nice to see what you're going to get. So it's a travel iron. It's little. You can see how little it is, but it's a full-on steam iron. And it comes in the bag, obviously comes with an English UK plug, handily. It also comes with a little jug, which is inside here. They wouldn't let me undo the packaging, so I can't show you. Um, there's a little plastic measuring jug inside that looks like that. And it's also got a little travel pouch to put it in. So, yes, this is very good for travelling. So, shall I just put it flat on the desk and then you can have a good look at it? There we go. Put face in me, maybe. There we go. Now you can see. Right. So, these are obviously great if you go travelling because, you know, travel lines are usually a little bit rubbish. They're not steam and you can, you know, you take them on holiday with you, you can barely get the creases out. So they are really, really good for that. But mainly for sewers, what they're really good for is you can actually put them on an, on an ironing board, which we're going to sell as well today, so I'll show you this in a minute. Um, and then you don't even need to move from your machine. So if you're just, particularly if you're doing something like foundation paper piecing where you have to do lots of pressing and sewing and pressing and sewing, they're really ideal for that because it is a full-on steam iron. They're also really good if you are, you know, the more pressing you do as you go along, the better it is. I've discovered recently, because I always press all my seams open or to one side, whatever I do. And someone said to me the other day, you should always press your seams as after you've sewn them, then press them open to one side. And it makes a massive difference because when you're sewing something, it goes through the machine and the action of the needle and the thread going through the fabric slightly puckers it and distorts it. You just give it a very quick press, that seam. It presses open much easier and presses to one side easier. But it's one of those things that you probably think, oh, I can't bother to get it from the machine. I just want to do the next bit. But if you've got a little steam iron like this beside you, then you can. Now, we're also selling, which we'll go into in a minute, this um, cutting and pressing mat. So this is ideal to partner with the steam iron. So 
It's got a little tab here that you can open up that you for putting the water in and you use the tiny little jug that comes with it. Um, and then you press that up and it's got steam and you press it down and it turns it off. So you can use it as a dry iron as well if you want. It's got a variable temperature, so it's got max, it's got min, you can choose. You know, you can, you can very quickly turn the steam on or off. Oh, Lee is loving my dress. Thank you very much. Well, um, this dress is, the, not that we're selling this today, but it's the So Different Scoop in a Four pattern, which you can have find on the web. I made this, oh, probably about 18 months ago from a pair of curtains. So on eBay, I bought, this is one curtain, and that's the other curtain. Now, my, they, it did really smell. I had to wash it twice, this pair of curtains, because I think it was sort of an old, damp house, so it was a bit smelly to start with. But now, I mean, so these are like sort of, they look like kind of 1960s caravan curtains. But what I like about this pattern is it has this panel down the side, so it makes you look like you're really thin, because you lose those side bits. Anyway, that's enough of my dress. But if you want to make one of these, the scoop pinafore is, I've made two of them now, is on our website by So Different. So let's move back to irons. But it's great because you can turn the steam on and off. And, and I've been ironing quite a few things because we're going to do some bias tape makers in a minute. And I wanted to have um, to press the fabric strips I'd cut. And it works really well. So it isn't like a rubbishy travel iron. This really is a mini steam iron, not a travel iron. But obviously you can use it for travelling. It's got a really nice smooth sole plate as well, which I like. Um, we've only got 10 in stock. So this is one of them quite like to keep this so can we talk about the quilters cut and press mat this is the june taylor so on one side we have a proper cutting mat um this is 49.99 it's 12 by 8 inches we use this on set every day so this is a proper self-healing cutting mat that you use for all your patchwork and quilting it's got all of the angles on it all of the measurements everything you need but on the other side, you've got pressing. So if you want to have a travel iron or a, or a normal iron, you could use anything with it. This is just a really useful pressing mat, which you can have on your work surface right next to your sewing machine. Um, instead of getting the ironing board out, because you know sometimes you just think, oh, I can't bother to get the ironing board out. You can just put this on your table so that it will protect it, it won't go through. Um, it's got circles, it's got angles, it's got everything you need printed on it. You could even use this for pinning things out. So if you wanted to be sure about the size of something, or you know, you can pin it on because it's got all the measurements, but you can stick pins in through it as well. So, and you can hold, so you, you know, if you wanted to pin something and see how the right size of it, you can, it will, it will hold pins. But you know how you some, you sometimes have, you know, well, I've got a really big cutting mat. You have big ones. It's quite nice to have a little one that you can just get out. It's easy to store. You could even hang it on the wall because it's got a, a hook on top. Um, but I would have it on my on my table because then I don't need to get the ironing board out because we don't always need to do big things, particularly if you've got the little steam iron as well. They go really well together. And I just like the way then you just quickly flip it over so you can cut it and then you can press it and then you can cut it. Just like that, really, really quick. So let's moving on. I'm just going to move the iron over there because I've got so much. Right, this is another thing that I really like is the micro stitch tool. This was something that one of the guests on sewing court used to use all the time. Now, this is a bit like, you know, in shops when they um, attach those, what are they called? Swing tags onto clothes. So it, very, very sharp needle, word of warning. Do keep the rubber thingy over it. You need to keep the rubber thing on it. There we go. Because it's quite a sharp needle. So take that off and put it somewhere safe over there. Then in the pack, here's the pack because I took it out earlier. In the pack, you get 1,200 of these little tags. And you can choose. There's, they've got white ones and black ones in them. So... These are temporary, really. You will want be wanting to cut these off afterwards. So they, that's why there's black ones and white ones, so that you can actually see them. So if you were putting on white fabric, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to see the white ones very easily. So you can choose which colour you put in, and then you pop these into the top of the machine. It's not electric or anything. It's all manual. Don't need any batteries. And then this is what it's really, really useful for. 
if you're a quilter. So when you've got your quilt sandwich, you've got your backing fabric, your wadding and the top, lay it all flat and make sure it's nice and pressed and even. Instead of tacking or using safety pins or iron on wadding or anything, all you do is you, you push the needle through the fabric, pull the trigger. Now, if we can get a close up on that, you can see it's pushed a tiny little tag that goes all the way through from the front and then it goes, if I turn it over to the other side, so if you can you see that it goes all the way through from the front, yeah, I'm just waiting for them to get a close up, please can we have the close up, it's coming, it's coming, so it comes all the way through the front and then it comes, it's come out at the back as well. So if you wanted to put all these layers together, this, just think how quick this is for basting your quilt. You can actually sew over them. It won't affect, your machine will go through them. Probably, you know, probably didn't do it too much, but you can, you've got to make sure you get the knee, the, the needle, I suppose it is a needle, yeah, all the way through. Um, and then when you've finished and you've done all your quilting, you can just snip them off. So you just get a tiny pair of scissors because the actual, although the ends are quite big, the little pieces that go through are very small. So it won't, it, they are thinner than a pin, I'd say. So it won't actually affect your fabric. It won't leave holes in it. But what a quick way of basting a quilt. And obviously you've got exactly on the same on the front as on the back. Now, we're also selling um, replacement refills needles because obviously at some point the needles will blunt because they do. So there's the um, replacement needles. We're selling those. They are 29, $22.99. I mean, they do last a long time. It's not like you've got to replace them, not like rotary cutter blades, but obviously they will blunt with time and you know once you've bought the tool you you will at some point use new needles we haven't had these very often so if you've already got one of these micro stitch tools and you want some needles get them or if you want to buy the two together um, and we've also got more of the tags fasteners is what they're called so we've got black ones there's the black ones so you can choose there's only, they're only $4.99 and you get $1,200 in them. But if you do want these, pop them in your basket now and check out because we've got less than 10 of these because these are really popular. Because obviously, you know, you, you are going to use quite a lot. I mean, you do get $1,200 in your pack when you buy it. But if you, but if you want more, then there's $1,200 there. Or you can buy, well, they're called neutral, but they look white to me. And we've, oh, we haven't got, we've got less than 10 of these as well. Wow, these have flown out. So if you want to buy extras of those, they're only 4 99 But for, you can also use them for, you know, if you want to tack small areas together rather than getting your needle out. If you want to hem something very quickly and just have a look. You know, say you want to hem your skirt or your trousers. Um, but you, you, sometimes, you know, when you're hemming a dress all the way around and you put pins in, it makes it stick out. It doesn't really give you a very good idea of what the finished hem is going to look like but if you hemmed it with these you could very quickly go oh, yeah that's the right length or not and then they're very easy to take out they won't ruin the fabric so they're not they're for so many different uses aren't they lovely mm. talking of limited so one moment one moment we've got is it this one we're going to do the other one this is all clamped to the table, so I'm going to have to bring it over. So, now sadly, very, very sadly, the nights are drawing in. The nights are drawing in. We need a little bit of light, don't we? This lamp is, you can use it for the floor, the table, or the desk. So the stand is behind me. I'm going to just bring this up. There's the stand that you get with it so that you can use it as a floor lamp. It's got a clamp on it, as you can see, that it's on the desk. I've got it attached to the desk here. So you can put it there. So there's the clamp and that will attach there. Now, it's... Um, there we go. 
its battery. So does it use, how do we turn it on? There we go. So it's magnifier. So what you can do is, because it's all bendy, you can use it. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, it's quite scary actually. Look at my hands. So it's got three colour spectrums. So you've got like warm, mid and then real daylight. So if you... If you're struggling to see something while you're sewing, rather than wearing an even stronger pair of glasses, which I tend to do, you can look through the um, magnifier. But also, if you don't want to look through the magnifier, but you just want the light, then you can change the light settings, which is great. And it's LED, so it's not going to heat. It's not going to be too hot. So you can have it work really closely with it. So you can have it attached to a table near you. You can be sat on the sofa doing your sewing. And then you can really see, I mean, you can, wow, that is so clear, isn't it? Oh, I just want to have a look. That's amazing. You can really see, but this is um, very, very limited in stock. But look how well you can see that. You know, if I want to look at any, um, or if you want to just read something, that's fantastic, is it? Sorry, I've got my head in the shot because I was having to look over. Right. <laughs> oh. Should we do these light boxes? Now, one of the, I've got lots of sewing gadgets. Some things I've bought and um, I don't use again. And other things are an absolute godsend. And I've got one of these. I've got an A3 one. So it's a light box. Now, I used to have a light box that I bought off of eBay. Mm, chunky thing, like this sort of deep. Really, you know, heavy to put on and off my desk. Then I bought myself one of these. These are so light. They just feel like a piece of foam board. And my other light box used to get ever so, ever so hot, but this is LED and it's great because it's just touch, just touch it. And it has three different levels. So you have one and then a little bit brighter and even brighter again. And then you press it again, it goes off. And you might think, why do I need the different light levels? But what I have discovered, that it depends on the colour of the fabric. So I do lots of embroidery as well as applique. And if I want to trace something, so if I get a piece of fabric, and maybe I want to trace a design onto it. So I'll just put this on here because well, hopefully the light will shine through there. You need to know, you just need to sing. I should have bought a piece of paper with me or something on, well, with a design underneath it. So if you're using um, a light fabric, then you need a, um, a really light light setting. Bizarrely, if you're using a slightly darker fabric, you often need a, you need different light settings depending on what you're doing. So say you wanted to trace through something, use a, one of these um, erasable pens, heat erasable, these are friction pens. This is what I always use. So if I put a piece of paper here, look, here's the instructions for something. You put your light box on and then you can easily trace over it because you can see that through. Now, if you're using a darker fabric, you need a different, a different setting. So it's really simple then to just trace through. So quite often, if I'm, well, I'm going to write over these roofs with the gyro tool cutting, um, you can do, you can just trace it perfectly with the light box. And then when you turn it off, it's there. But when you do, um, when you're using different colours, you might need a slightly different light setting. It's got measurements down the side as well, which is really useful for lining things up. So if you wanted to line up, um, maybe you're putting some bonder web on something and you want to applique it on top, you can line it up with these. But it's just one of those things that is really, really useful. But we also do it as an A4. So there's the A4 version. Um, they, all, they all come with plugs luckily and adapters you just plug it in so it depends on what size you want I mean I've got an A3 one because it's nice to, then I'm not limited but if you just want the A the A4 but what's great is it doesn't get hot at all um sometimes you find you turn it off by accident because it's so you just have to watch that but it is nice that it has the different light settings. And because it's so light, it's really easy to store somewhere. And honestly, it's, well, it's hard to show you on TV how light it is. But it, it does feel a bit like a piece of foam board. But they are great. If you do any kind of applique or embroidery or you just want to trace things, use them for art. Kids use them loads. Mine do. Pinch them for their homework and stuff when they need to copy things. If you wanted to copy patterns from a book... Um, you know when it says photocopy this pattern rather than doing that, or if you've got some patterns and you don't want to cut them out of the book, you can just trace them. This is just really quick. 
it's much much easier than taping something to a window and you can do it to, in the dark you don't have to wait for daylight as well so we're going to do the final light now i'll put that one over there this is great i love this light i used to have one of these on my desk actually on the sewing cotton isn't it great so what's lovely about this one which um, isn't plugged in one moment so i can show you how it works i'm going to just plug it in so i've just i've just disappeared i'm back i'm back i'm back look at that so it's led so it doesn't get hot at all but it's just a really useful desk lamp because it's got this very, it's got a really good daylight. It's the gooseneck thing so that you can angle it. But it's got this really handy holder here so you can put, um, well, you can use it just on a normal desk so you can put stationary things. You can also put your pens in here so your friction pens, you can sit in there. Um, but you could put it on, on a side table if you're doing some sewing so that you could um, have it to just light things up. But, you know, particularly when it's, evening and the lights are going dim and you want to match up some threads and see what the colours look like this is perfect for that because because it won't get hot you can put your hands on it but it's just a really handy thing and it's 16.99 just useful perfect for this time of year um thinking about christmas as well you know if you want to be buying someone um christmas present this is perfect for you know any students anyone do, doing their homework but also for crafters as well I used to I have one of these on my desk and I used it a lot for when I was matching up stranded cottons and things because the colour is, because it's daylight, it doesn't mess up, you haven't got that sort of yellowy light, it doesn't mess up the colours, you get a true colour from it. So um, pop it in your basket, remember only one P&P all day, 3 95 I'm just going to turn that off and put that to one side. So <laughs> I'm going to do now, I need to get my ironing board back, but, oh where did I put that, here we go. The te bias tape maker. Now, I did wonder whether to be honest with you or not, but I mean, obviously, you know, I've been sewing for many, many years and I've seen these tape makers and I have never used one. And you know, the reason I've never used one is I thought, because they look, I just thought, well, I bet they don't really work. That's why. That's stupid, isn't it, really? But that is why I've never used one. But because I was demonstrating one today, I thought, well, I'll have a go then. But I, you know, I, I make loads and loads of bias tape because I often bind things. Not just um, bias tape, but I use, I make a lot of tape just cut on the straight of grain, not even across the bias, because I often bind edges of hems, clothing. I bound the edges of my pockets. I bind all sorts of things. Just see, look, the inside of there. I bound. So I make lots of it, and I take a strip of fabric... Here's one I cut earlier because I cut them in advance so I could show you how it worked. Um, I cut a, cut the strip of fabric. There we go. I've got two lots here. Um, and then normally, I mean, let's get the iron because we need the iron. Luckily, that is still plugged in. Normally, to make bias tape, you fold it in half. Then you open it up and then you fold the sides to the centre and the other sides. And that gives you your bias tape. And I've never used one of these which is mental because they are so easy and I'm, I can't believe I haven't used one before. So what you need to do, now we've got two sizes, we've got the 12 millimetre which is the half an inch and we've also got the 25 millimetre which is the one inch. Now what you've got to remember about this is that most, is that this measurement that they give you, the half an inch or the one inch which is 12 mils or 25 mils, that's your single fold measurement so that's the measurement that you'll get when it's just folded i'll show you in a minute most bias tape is then folded in half again and used as a double fold which i'll show you so you have to half that so basically if you want a quarter of an inch double fold tape so that when you bind the edge of something you're binding it by a quarter of an inch you need to buy the half inch if you want the finished binding on a double fold to be half an inch you need to buy the one inch because you will end up with half of that if that makes sense. So I need a pair of scissors, which I've got here. I knew I'd got some. What you do to start with is you cut the end of your strip. Now cut it across. If you want this um, strip of fabric to go around a corner, cut it at 45 degrees across the fabric because there's more stretch on the bias, which is diagonal to the selvage. If you're just binding a straight edge, then don't worry, you can cut it just straight so cut it into a point now the bias maker has a wide end and a narrow end the fabric goes in at the wide end 
and the wide end is the width of the fabric. The narrow end is the width that it will be finished. So you have to feed it through. Now in the bias tape maker, there's a little slot which is there for two reasons. Number one is, when because you, you've got to feed this all the way through, you can put a pin in this little slot and you can pull it all the way through. And number two is that because it's best to use steam to press this as, as you're making it, it helps the steam to escape so it doesn't get all trapped inside. And then, because if it did, you, you'd end up, this would be dripping because it's made from plastic and metal. So, now you've threaded it through, really, really easy. So there's, this is, because this is the half inch, you cut the fabric to double that. So this fabric strip is one inch wide, or 25 mils. Now it's coming out of the other end, see? Pull it out a little bit. Put your iron on the end that's coming out, okay? Make sure you keep this straight because it's got to be fed in straight. And then just pull it through and press it as you go along. Pull it through and press it. So that's really easy. I Honestly, how can I have, because I do so much of this. Honestly, I just thought, because they're quite little things, I thought, I bet they're a bit rubbish and I never even bothered to use them. So you do that all the way along. I'm just going to stop there, otherwise we'll never finish this. And now, look, perfect. So that's now half an inch wide, which is what it says on the pack, that it's half an inch, 12 mils. But obviously, mostly you'll be using this to bind an edge. And all you have to do is fold this in half. So if you fold that in half, that's quite simple because you haven't got a... You've only got to fold the edges. With a steam is best. You've now got quarter of an inch double fold bias tape. And that was so easy. Really easy. Now, if you want to buy the bigger one, the one inch, all you have to do is you cut two inch wide strips of fabric, work in exactly the same way. They go into the end, you pull them through, and then you'll have a one inch and then when you fold it over, you'll have half an inch. So it's really worth, I'm definitely going to get both of these, buy both of them because that gives you two options. But look how quick that was. The time it takes to make it by folding it over, opening it up, folding them into the centre. I just can't believe I've never owned one before. Mm. So, I told you I had some lovely tools today. I've had great fun with these. Now, this is another thing that they gave me was... The Bridgewater Stitch Remover, which again, a little bit sceptical about, thought, well, what's this for? What does this do? I'm only ever sceptical about things because I think, oh, I haven't, why haven't I got that? I've not heard of that. Why haven't I got one of these? So, um, this, look, you, um, you plug it in and it's recharged and it charges. That's how it works. This is charged in advance. So in the box, you will get the charger with the UK plug. You just turn it on and the little teeth start vibrating. Can you hear that? They don't seem to cut you. Don't cut me anyway. Sounds a bit like a lady shave, to be honest. I mean, it, yes, it all looks a bit like a beard trimmer. So what it's for is for undoing stitches. So I've brought with me an old pair of jeans. Well, these are my daughter's jeans, but she gave them to me. But I collect jeans because um, I use them a lot for making into things. So I cut them up and I make them into bags and pencil cases and stuff. So this is one of her pair of jeans. Now, say I wanted to undo, take the pockets off, because quite often I use the pockets of jeans um, to make into purses. If you put two pockets together and a zip across the top, they make a really nice purse because they have that really nice shaped edge and then you can line them with something else. But So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try this because there's, you know, the stitching on jeans is quite intense and strong. So I've, this is the little bit I've practised on earlier. So you just turn it on and you have it this way up and look, you just push the, the stitch remover and it just cuts through it. Look at that just cuts through that's amazing that's so quick isn't it and then if I went this way oh look at that I mean if you got if I was got on this because this is a double row of stitching here so I need, I'm going to move it over a bit I don't know whether you can see right because there's a double row that would take me ages look at that mm. as long as you what I did was I undid a couple of stitches first because I, you know, although these are old jeans, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to cut anything. But it will even go, you know, just through 
you can pull them to one side and do it but it's just so much easier because you only need one hand whereas when you're using a ripper you've sort of got to do it and then pull this open but because you can hold this tight with some tension as long as you keep it flat it doesn't cut the fabric beneath Look at that. it's fantastic isn't it oh. anyway so look at that but that's so quick isn't it and you and because you can see this is not you know if sometimes if you undo seams you can do it quite quickly because it's you can just rip it apart look at all the stuff she must have had in her pockets um but that's really really quick so if you're undoing lots of things or you would just want it to be a bit quicker that is perfect for that you know particularly when they're heavier bits of stitching so next there's only six of these left because they are really good now gyro cut now i don't know whether you've seen these um noel was on last monday and that date was what's the date today the sixth the fifth the fifth so last monday which was the fifth of of october i'm just going to take this off he was on demonstrating these these are great so if you want to see how it was done exactly you have to watch him do it but it's just this tiny tiny little tool i'm going to take it out so this is the mega bundle that we've got for you today um and in the mega bundle you get the tool which is basically i mean it just looks like a swan's neck but it's a tiny tiny little blade cutter but it cuts 360 degrees so if you want to cut paper or fabric into tiny tiny shapes extremely accurately this does the job watch the demo and you'll see but you also get with it because this mega bundle of £29.96, you're saving £5. So the way it works is that you need to stick your paper or your fabric to a board. It has to be sticky to hold it um, really still. So it comes with a sticky mat adhesive that you use to put all over your cutting mat to stick it down. You put it on there 20 minutes before and then you can stick it down. What this is ideal for, so say you wanted to cut out an applique shape from fabric, well, this is what I would use it for. If you want to um, cut out a piece of, you know, like a flower or a motif from something, this tiny little tool, it's got the blade. Now, this in this beggar bundle, it comes with a um, spare blade as well. It will just cut just absolutely accurately, but it won't cut your fingers. So it's quite safe as well. Gosh, we've had a lot of things that won't cut your fingers this morning. But if you watch last week, you'll see. I mean, you've probably seen it before, but we have got this special bundle today. So it includes the cutter and the blade and the sticky mat adhesive and the um, heat activated fabric stable of an adhesive, which is a bit like um, a bondaware. It's like a powder. But that's a really, really good value pack because you save a fiver with it. So if you've seen the gyro cut and you know how it works, this is perfect. So finally, oh, because we're running out of time, we are going to do the pliers and the snaps. Now, these are wonderful. These are the Vario pliers. Now, you can use these for attaching the um, cam snaps, which we'll show you in a minute. But you can also use them for lots and lots of other... Um, items like press fasteners, eyelets. They will also cut a hole in something. So if you need to cut a hole to put a nether eyelet in, they come with all of the um, the attachments. So you know when you buy a packet of eyelets, sometimes they come with a tool and you have to use a hammer and it fits it exactly. Not always. But if that's it's got a little bit fiddly to use and you've got to find a hammer and you have to be careful how many times you hit it. Whereas the Vario pliers, they will do different sizes. They will do three millimetres and four millimetres eyelets or snaps or press fasteners. But it's a lot easier to use than the little tool that comes with it. So they're really, really good. If you do use, um, you know, the sort of the ready-made eyelets that you can get. I use them a lot for eyelets because I make things like gift tags. I always put an eyelet in the top of it. Or if you want to make a drawstring back bag, then you put the eyelets in. Now, the snaps you can use these cam snaps with the various pliers so these are great so these are just like press studs but they're plastic Re these are um green ones we've got them in green and pink they're in green and pink 
and they are what's the diameter oh, they're four mil four mil diameter so you know they're brilliant for putting on little purses or bags or you can use them on clothing if you just want a tiny little little pop of color of a snap in here there are 25 sets so you have two there's 50 pieces but 25 sets we've also got pink as well so you can choose between pink and green now these will work with the um Ply, these vario pliers you can put them in but they're just a very quick and easy way and they're fully washable and they won't rust brilliant way of adding a quick sort of snap or press fastener rather than the old ones that you have to sew in much quicker way of doing it so oh run out of time completely don't know where that's gone so after the break we've got Cara um, coming up she's going to show us how to make this really lovely designed by, created by Debbie Shaw, Rosemary Bag. Um, I was having a chat with her before we went on air. She said it's really, really simple to do. It features the lovely Bosal wadding in it that gives it a lot of structure. But you, you're really going to enjoy this. So go pop off, go make yourself a cup of tea. I'm going to. And then you can sit back and watch Cara make the bag. And if you want, in that the break, you can buy the kit get that all done, check out so it's all ready so you can just sit back and enjoy the demonstration. So we will see you in a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel jewellery makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool, and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil, and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection, and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters, and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page
Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross-stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new, and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it, and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Welcome back, welcome back. We've got Cara on with us to show us how to make this lovely bag. Look how nice. It's a nice length, actually, isn't it? Nice little shoulder bag. So, this is available in three different colourways. This is the navy blue spot colourway with this lovely floral. Um, it has a little magnetic clasp fastener. Oh, and it's full of, it's full of, <laughs> full of soft toy stuffing. It's a shame it wasn't chocolate or a few sandwiches, maybe, but it's not. <laughs> You should have put something more interesting in there. <laughs> what a really lovely bag. I really like the scallop edge to it, but it's just a nice length, isn't it? And it's also very structured. Now, Debbie says in her pattern, you could leave out the strap and you could use it as a clutch bag. It's good, yeah. couldn't you? Be a nice little clutch bag, wouldn't it? So you can buy this as in three different kits. So there's the first kit, which is this one here, um, is this kit. So this kit is called... Mm, not sure the pink and orange row yes this is called pink and orange roses because that one's pink i was thinking it's not the navy spot in the kit you get the pattern which is the instructions and there's also a link for the video tutorial so that's the the pattern with everything you need to know on it you also get the pre-cut bosal. Now, bosal is like a foam interfacing. It's very structured, so it gives your bag strength and stability, but it's actually incredibly easy to sew through. So some, some of the interfacings are quite stiff, but I've been amazed when I've used this stuff that you can actually sew through really easily. You don't need a special foot or a special needle. It just goes through. So in here are all the pre-cut pieces that you need to make the bag. So you haven't got any templates or any thinking about it. It's all the pieces are cut for you here. Because you can buy bosal by the, you know, the cut piece and the half metre. But because these are shaped and they have like these little bits cut out in them, it's really useful this is already cut. You also get two half metres of fabric. So you get the lovely um, pink and orange roses. This is a lovely cotton poplin fabric. So it's half a metre of your full width 112 four centimetre 44 inch fabric this really lovely sort of soft dusky blue with vintage roses on it um, and to go with it you get a half a meter of this navy blue and white spot fabric which again is a cotton poplin now because you have half a meter of each in our bag we've used the um, spot for the body and the um, the floral for the lining and the flap, but you could change it round because you've got the same quantity of each. So you can decide which way round it goes. Okay. So 
The next kit that I've got to show you, I'm just going to fold that up nicely so that we can see it properly rather than keep it all unfolded. Um, the next kit that I have is called, let me just put that to one side, Red and Orange Roses. Again, we get the pattern for the bag. We get the pre-cut bosal and then we get two half meters. Now, this is the um, bag that Carl is going to be demonstrating. So you'll be able to see what it looks like. And in here, we get half a meter of this lovely floral roses fabric. So it's on an ivory. It's orange and red and slightly pinkish roses with soft green leaves on an ivory background. And teamed with that, you've got the red and white stripe, which picks up the deep red, rich red of the roses. So they're both cotton poplins. They're very soft and a lovely weight. But what's great is that because these bags have got the bosal in them, they've got this the um, single-sided fusible foam stabiliser, So which means that you can iron it onto the fabric and it will hold anyway. Um, Carl will be explaining that all to us. But it means that you can use lighter weight cotton poplins because the bosal gives it stability. So that's the second kit. The third kit, the final option, is called small pink and white flowers. So again, you get the pattern. You get the pre-cut bosal pieces and then you get these two fabrics. I love this combination. So you've got this lovely dusky pink background with little pink flowers and white daisies all dotted amongst it. Multi-directional, which makes it much easier to cut out because you haven't got to think about which way to go. And then that's teamed with this lovely um, bright pink with a white spot and the bright pink of here is picked out in the deepest pink in the flowers so they team together really well so choose one of the options and depending on what you want to use it for what you want it to go with what season you're going to have it for but those are all the options that you can have now also if you want to use your own fabric and don't want to buy the kit you can buy from us the pattern with the pre-cut bosal sheets so that's just called Rosemary Bag Pattern and Instructions with the Pre-Cut Bosal Board. That's $19.99. This is brand new to us today. Haven't shown this before. So you can choose from one of our three options that has the fabric or you can go with just the pattern and the bosal because you might have some of your own fabric at home. Maybe you've got a bit of William Morris to make, you know, something. But if you want to buy some of our fabrics, you want, you want to make a bag to go with a particular outfit or, you know, for parties or something, then check out the website because obviously we've got loads of choice. Um, last thing just to say is that we also have Velcro because you will need, you might want to use um, this hook and loop. You're not supposed to say Velcro. That's the brand name. Hook and loop tape. It's quite hard to say that. Hook and loop tape. You can use this for fastening the bag if you want. That is um, 20 mils wide, which is about three quarters of an inch, and a metre long. Only £1.49, but obviously you can use this for loads and loads of other things. Um, and then you can. All, we've also got magnetic snaps as well, because there's one in here, a back and a front, and the two sort of washers that go with them. So we have got those as well, 2 99 and they're in gold with an 18 mil diameter, okay? And then finally, the f three of the fabrics that we're featuring, which is the red stripe, half a metre, that's 3 99 for half a metre, and it's your normal 112 centimetres, 44 inch width. We've also got the navy spot, which is featured in one of the bags. If you if you like the fabric, that's four ninety nine for half a meter. Navy polka dots on cotton poplin fabric, and the final one is this lovely candy polka dots. Yeah, that is the colour of it, really. Candy polka dots. That's five pounds for half a meter. Okay, so those are all the three fabrics if you want to buy them. Anyway, now I've done all of that. Let's go over to Cara and she's going to show us how to make the bag. So good morning, Cara. Good morning. Good how are morning. you? I'm fine, thank you. It's nice to see you. Yeah, we, we, when were we together? About a month ago? Yes, yes. We I think it was room. your first. It was, yeah. I think it was my second show. Yes, bless you. <laughs> scared. I was really, really scared. I'm only a bit scared now and I was completely Just a bit. I was terrified then. Just a bit. Um, 
So how have you found the bag? Oh, loved it. Absolutely right. loved it. It's very good for beginners. Okay. Very, very good for beginners. And Debbie does such a good job of explaining how to do things. She has very clear photographs. Um, and the, the link to the video is fantastic as well. So, um, you know, it was really good, really good. Oh, okay. And I'm, you know, I'm not... Um, I'm not a novice with bags, mm. but I must admit, I think I my first bag was possibly 18 months ago. So, oh, okay. you know, it's it's lovely to sort of try different techniques and different things yeah, like that. Yeah. But it's it's very quick to make. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, if people have thought about doing a bag, that they might actually sort of think, oh, yeah, I could have a go at mm. this one. So um, Well, it's nice that it's got the bosal in it as well, isn't it? It's lovely because it gives it such body, um, you know, to the actual bag, which is really good. So it, it keeps the shape, mm. you know, that's that's the important thing. It keeps the shape and everything. And you can play around with decorating the, the flap on it as well. Okay. So, you know, the one we've got over there, I've just used... Oh, on this one? Um, yes, I've just used um, a little covered button. Yeah, and that's then, pretty. I like the little rosette that you've put around yeah, it as well. Yeah, and that's well. just like a yo-yo or a, I think it's a Suffolk puff. A Suffolk puff? Yes. Suffolk, Suffolk that's puff. That's just really pretty, isn't it? Well, yeah. it, it ties together the two fabrics really well. I like yes, that. Yes, yes. So touch. it's really nice, but you don't have to do that. On Debbie's, I think she's used a lovely big button. I love buttons. I have this thing about buttons. That would look really nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, a really, really big button with a bit of ribbon on it. Mm. So you can play around with how you want to finish the bag off, which okay. is really good. So. Yeah. And I guess you don't even need to put anything on it if you don't want to. No, the you can have it plain. On the you can have, yeah, you can absolutely have it plain. So I've used the magnetic clasps mm. there, but if you didn't want to use the magnetic clasp, you could actually use the Velcro, which is really Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. So you can choose how you want to fasten it then. Yeah. Yep. So where do we start? Oh, start at the very beginning. Start at the beginning. <laughs> I'm okay. not going to sing. Yeah. But <laughs> oh, go on, go on. Um, so we have um, Debbie Shaw's instructions here, which are really, really clear. So, um, you know, she has all of that in there. And she gives you different options. So we've done one option where you get everything included. Mm. But if you wanted to just use your own fabrics, then, you know, that's possible as well. So um, she includes the pattern, um, the pattern pieces as well included in the pack. And, um, you know, that's just a nice option because the other thing that I found was that, you know, you could go on and make different ones. So, right, you know, okay. especially people are thinking about um, Christmas and Christmas mm. presents and things like that. So um, I think it's just really nice to sort of, I'm going to try, try, I know the time is flying away. <laughs> yeah, yes, but I'm going to try bit. and make a lot of my Christmas presents. So mm -hmm. I think it's lovely that, um, you know, you have that option and you have that person in mind. Yes, you know, yeah. um, I think this for, you know, a teenager or something like that would be really fun. Yeah, it is really, really fun. fun. Yeah. So, so you can use, so if you don't use the bosal for another one, you yep. could just use the patterns. And use you can just else. use the patterns and if you didn't want to, you know, obviously the bosal is a cut to size, so that's what makes yeah. it so easy. Yeah. Um, but if you had some of your own interfacing at home, you can do that as oh, well. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm um, going to just start, I think you went through the pattern, did you, um, Bex? Yeah. Yeah, so um, she does, as I say, go through everything um, step by step. Photographs are ideal because they actually refer to, mm. um, you know, the, the photograph for each step. So it's, she just holds your hand as you, you're going through it, Yeah, and how do you access the video? Um, the video is actually through, I think it's on here. Does she just give you the link to? Yes. Um, where are we? Here we go. I don't know if we can pick that up. Oh, okay. But it's the um, vimo.com. Oh, okay. Search press, and then it's DS3 rows. So you can just access it. So that's you can that's access a really it good or way obviously to look back. If you want to see mm. the expert doing it, then go to this <laughs> one. Well, it's sometimes <laughs> nice, isn't it? Doing it? <laughs> sometimes when you make something, there's often one particular point yes. Yes. that you think, I don't understand that one. Yes. Even though, but when you see it demonstrating, ah, well, I've got it. So. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what do we do to start off with? Okay, them? so what I wanted to do was really just show people if they've never used this before, um, this actual fabric is lovely. The bosal has um, a slightly tacky side i don't know if the camera can pick up but it, it is shiny but you can feel that it's got okay. sort of like a glue to it 
and then you have sort of the other side which is nice and soft and everything so is it easy to tell which one's got the glue yes okay yes so what you want to do is actually um, adhere the glue to the wrong side of your fabric so okay. I've just pressed the fabric with this lovely little iron it's great that is now it really iron. is I've yes. want one of those I do <laughs> but the steam works really well as well yes. isn't it yes I was having to play with it earlier after I'd filled it up so what you want to do and I'm just going to pop this over is because this is striped fabric you do want to just be careful or you don't have to but um, you do want to sort of see if you can try and get it not sure if you can see there I'm trying to match the edges so I've got part of a red stripe on one side and part mm. of a red stripe on the other you want to have um, a little bit of fabric all the way round because your stitching line is going to be to the edge of the bosal. So you'll be stitching along the edge there. So okay. you want your seam allowance there. And, um, you know, Debbie suggests sort of like a quarter of an inch. Right. But you can, it, you don't have to be that accurate because your stitching line is actually to the edge of the bosal. Um, don't worry too much about being exactly okay um, but you press precise. it on first yeah. so what i'm going to do is now that i've done that i'm just going to flip this over so you have do you have to press from the fabric side i'm pressing from the fabric right. side just because i feel that um you know you're actually at uh, you know activating the glue okay so just want to take your time and obviously it needs to be quite warm can you use steam or is it? Um, I've got a little bit of steam on there. Okay. I think on the instructions, I was just thinking about what that. I didn't have a copy of the instructions. It might be worth um. just having a look at that. I did read them before I did mine. <laughs> mm. Okay. <gasps> We're multinational this morning, Carl. We've just, had a, we've just had a message from Tennessee. Ooh, yeah. yippee! Hi, Tennessee. In, in Tennessee. How is everybody over there? How is Tennessee? Wonder what the weather's like. Oh, Kayleen from Melbourne. Oh goodness me! Hello. I'm back from Australia. Oh hi! Wow. How are you, everybody? Wow. What's well, going on in neighbours? Us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's Can't lovely. Imagine people are watching us from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, what does it, it says? This can withstand the cotton setting on most irons. Remember, if the fabric is fragile, you must use the fabric as your guide. Okay, so basically you set the iron to the temperature yes. of the fabric. Yes, so if it's a cotton fabric, you'll have a cotton setting on your iron. Well, and obviously it says never place a hot iron directly onto the fusible side. No. Well, then you wouldn't, would you? No, oh my gosh, okay. no. <laughs> and um, it can be washed and tumble dried, and tumble dried with no heat or air dried. Excellent. That's good. So fully washable. Excellent. Right, so you can see now, let's just pop this over. Um, I've ironed that and look how secure oh, that it is. It's just well. really, really yeah. sticks well. Once once you activate the glue, it really does stick very well. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this knife here and just roughly um, because you've got the depth of the actual bosal. Um, don't again don't worry that it's going to be exact um, because you are going to be trimming it down after you've stitched it so I'm just going to cut that oh so you just sort of cut it roughly about yes. a quarter of an inch yeah. outside and then you trim it after yeah. well that makes sense I think I need a new blade in my um, rotary cutter it's been overused there is another rotary cutter behind yes, you in that that's um, fine tray I think we'd be oh, there's be one okay. in the um, stand yeah. behind you in the tray Pop that one back up there. Yeah, I have to put, remember to put a new blade in it. Um, just oh yes, oh my gosh, can't you tell the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you know how with you I do. I battle on with mine for weeks, I know, and I it's know, and I'm think, having to get a pair of scissors and cut all those threads it misses, and then eventually I get round to change, and I think why didn't I do that? I know, ages ago? I know. I I treated myself at sort of the you know earlier in the year, and said oh I will you know get more blades because mm. I knew that I'd be doing lots of stitching but you can tell such a difference when you've um, it does I, I think my problem is I constantly run over pins with them which is really oh stupid because really? you said just take the pins off your cutting mat but <sighs> they get underneath bits yes. of fabric yeah that you haven't really realized and I, I get through so many blades for that reason 
But if, you, if I bother to, you know, to keep it all tidy, but when you put a clean blade in, it's lovely, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's, um, yes, it's wonderful. Because all those little threads that, it sort of, because it just gets nicked in one place, doesn't it? So all I'm doing is I'm just doing the straight lines and then I'll use a pair of scissors just to do the curves. And you can see on this particular um, bag that our darts already placed in the bosal. Um, so they are for the shape of the bag. Oh, so, that's what the um, little notches yes, are. Yes, yeah. And um, the other thing that I found was um, a little bit easier because you, you will have lining fabric as well. I found it much easier to use mm. this before I actually um, use this as a pattern for your lining. Okay. Because you're going to be making your lining without any bosal. Mm. And um, if you use this as your pattern, it means that um, you've, you've got the exact shape. Right. So, okay. um, you know, it, it does say, well, once you've attached the fabric, use the fabric and everything. But it was getting the, um, the oh, dart so in as well. Oh, so did you cut your lining out first? Then? So I cut my, I right. used this as a pattern and cut my lining out first. So I'm just going to trim round and again, just like that. You don't cut into the actual darts mm. yourself. So and I mean, it's such a, these Debbie Shaw's bags are, are great, aren't they? The patterns and the designs are great. But aren't we lucky because we have her as one of our I know, I know. It's one know. of us. I just, I, I mean, I'm in awe of the so number cool, of projects it? and books and things like that. Where does she find the time? And she works, she works with us. I know. Kind of our little and family. Just, you know, does her, her mm. own um, things as well. It's just yes. amazing. So we're so, we're, we we're are so lucky. lucky. So, we so are. lucky. So what um, the next stage, if I can just show you on here, is that this is the other part of the bag. So we've got the front and the back of the bag. Right. And um, this particular one is the front of the bag. So once you've done that, you then sew it in place. Yes. What you're going to do now, they suggest having um, some quilting lines um, for about an inch, mm. which is fine if you've got a fabric that hasn't got stripes. Okay. So what I decided to do was actually do my quilting line. So every three blocks. Nice. Yeah, no, that's lovely. I did my quilting mm. line. So that's all I'm going to do now okay. is actually just it gives it some real texture though, doesn't it? It does. I mean, obviously it holds the layers together, but it also gives it a nice texture. It does. And it, it, it just finishes it off and makes it a lot more professional. So all I'm going to do is just make sure that I start in the right section. Oh, is the same so as the front yes, and the back. So I'm going to actually, well, because my cutting, I'm going to um, just fold that in half. And so that is going to be my halfway. So okay. I'm going to go, my first lines are going to be on the edge of those red stripes there. Right. Okay. Hello from Ireland. Oh, hi. Ireland. Mandy from Ireland. What's the weather Hello, like? Mandy. Yeah, what's, what's the, the weather like? like? Where, why We've got so many people watching us this morning, Excellent. all over the world as well. Fantastic. So mm. all I'm doing, I'm just going to slow that down slightly. Um, well, thanks for messaging us in on Facebook. Producer Paul is reading them all out to me, so it's really nice to hear from you all. Because you sort of feel, you know, when we're here, you don't, because you, we can't see you all. Oh, I wish we shame. could. Shame they weren't all we sitting could. there, we could see them all and then we could have wish a chat. We, yes. In fact, we could get you come and join us, give us a hand. That'd be wonderful. I'd love to know. So what it's people really are nice that you message us all in and tell us what you're doing and what you think because it me it makes us feel that you are definitely out there and watching us. And part of our family, mm. you know, the Sewing Street family. Yeah, it is. is um, it does feel like that, doesn't yes, it? Yes, definitely. Well, I mean, I follow the Facebook fan page all the time. I'm always seeing what people are posting on there and what you're commenting on, and oh. it does feel very much. Yeah, and what you make as well is great. So if you, you know. If you make any of the stuff that we demonstrate, particularly if you make these bags, you know, send us a picture because it's really lovely. I love seeing what people do. It's quite incredible. It is amazing. And I just am um, in awe of mm. some people, again, you know, with their creativity. And, you know, we obviously supply the patterns and the kits and mm. things like that. But you can do your own thing. 
It's you really know. lovely the way that sometimes some of you interpret the things we do as well. Yes. So it's not just, we'll say, make it like this, and then you'll put a picture on the fan page and go, oh, wow, that's such a good idea. I'd never thought of doing that. No. You know, and you put your own little twist on, which is what it's about, isn't it? I yes. think I don't think there's any designers out there who think you should just follow what they say. It's nice to see that you've changed things around and done things slightly differently. And I think um, a combination of fabrics as well. We were saying mm. that this morning, weren't we? Can you imagine if you were hopefully next year going to a wedding or something oh. like that and you were struggling yeah. to get um, you know, a handbag or a clutch bag to go with your yes. outfit? Yes, yeah. Um, that's often the most difficult thing, isn't yes. it? Is finding the bag and shoes to yes. match. But at least with a design like this, once you've bought the kit and you've used the fabrics in here, then you can use the design to make your own. But, you know, as a clutch or a or handbag, I'd like them to go out the length of it, though, because it just sort of... It might be different if you're very tall, I'm quite sure. But just, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you can change the length of the, the handle strap to match, but this just sort of sits on my waist. It's quite nice, isn't it? I might just keep it there. <laughs> You rest my arms on it. So sorry, this is just mm. straight stitching, but I did want to sort of show um, if people have never used Bosal before, how easy so it is So were you using to just a normal needle there? Normal needle. Not um, a jeans or no, a special one? No, and no walking foot. Right. Famous last words. Is there any wood here? <laughs> 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 no um, walking foot. No walk well, I don't have a walking foot at home, and I always feel that, you know, there may be lots of people yeah. out there without yeah. walking feet. feet. Walking feet. Um, so it's good to sort of try and sort of say, well, look how easily mm. that goes through the machine. Well, I'm always amazed with this um, foam stabiliser that it is so thick and strong and will give structure, but it's so through. It must just be the way it's woven or something, mustn't it? Yes. That it does, well, I mean, it does say easy to stitch and needle friendly, but it is it. And it makes a really nice sound when you sew through it. Yes. Isn't it? Sort of. It's lovely. I mean, this machine's really nice. It's just the Elna 560. Oh, OK. Um, and how quiet this machine is. Well, it is, isn't it? You know, if we were doing this 10, 20 years ago, oh, my you wouldn't goodness. be able to hear, would you? <laughs> no. I've still got my machine from 20 years ago, <laughs> and I keep saying, oh, I must upgrade mm. it, must upgrade it. But it's, it's wonderful. It really is a good one. I bought it when I was doing my city and guilds. Oh, OK. Um, because I wanted to sort of have a machine that possibly did a little bit more. Mm. Um, and it's it's lovely to have that option, but I really, really like having... This one's got lots of different stitches as well, which is good. It's so quite a nice compact machine as well, yes. isn't it? It's, you sort of feel like you're getting a, a lot of value for your money in a small space. Because, you know, obviously it depends on what you do. Sometimes, you know, some people want the really big machines with all of the features, but that's just a, a kind of middle of the range nice machine that was just good for beginners but also if you're more experienced as well it is lovely and what i've done and um, i will do the rest of the um stitching here because i think it's quite nice to sort of see it complete um i've made okay. the stitch length longer oh okay and why so have you done that then it's like a top stitch so it um Oh, so it's more decorative? It is more okay. decorative, yeah. Well, while you finish that off, we'll just have a quick run through the kits. Yep. Um, so, the bag that um, Cara's doing at the moment is the red and orange roses. So remember, in the kit, you get the pattern, which has got everything you need in it, including the paper pattern and the instructions and the photos and the link to the video. You get the pre-cut bosal pieces, of which there are three. So the front of the bag, the back of the bag, and the flap. And then you get two half metres of fabric, which is 100% cotton, cotton poplin. Um, cotton poplin has a special finish to it, which makes it very soft, with a very almost not, not, not shiny, but it just has a slight... Well, no, I, if I say sheen, it makes it sound shiny, and it isn't. But it just has a really nice soft feel to it with a surface that just... It just picks up the light a bit more differently than a normal, uh, not a poplin cotton. So that's that one. Um, the sample that's made up here, so this bag, this kit is here. This is called the, um, what's this one called? Pink and Orange Roses. So again, you get the pattern, you get the bosal pup pre-cut three pieces, and then you get two half metres of fabric. There's this lovely... Um, well, they call it pink and orange roses, 
but it's well I suppose it is yes pink and peachy oranges on this lovely dusky blue background and with it you get half a meter as well of the navy with white spot cotton poplin and that's to make this bag here there you go so you can see how the two they go together and remember because you get half a meter of each you can choose you could swap them round so you could have the um, floral fabric as the main body and you could have the spotters as, as the flap or you could have the navy as the lining and do it that way around so there's many options you can try um, and then the third option is the pink this pink bag again you get the pattern you get the bosal and then you get two half meters again of cotton poplin the feature floral print has got a a dusty pink background with these lovely white I think they're like daisies or yeah they must be daisies they've got yellow centers with a slight gray line in them and then these small rose buds which have got mid pink and a very deep pink and this deep pink is picked up in the poplin um, which has got this dark and this the dark pink of that is picked up in the dark pink here and also if you want to provide your own fabric and you don't want to buy the kit, you can buy this pack here for $19.99 and that has the pattern and the bows. Well, this is actually the most popular. So obviously you, you can use then your own fabric. Remember as Cara said that in the um, pattern pack is the actual paper pattern. So if you want to make this again and you haven't, you can use your own foam stabiliser or maybe a heavyweight interfacing or some wadding, all different options. But you will get this pack so it shows you how it all works. And then you've got the pattern shields forever. You can do whatever you like with. So, Cara, back to you. Oh, lovely. You. So, right. you finished quilting. So I've finished all my quilting. Um, so, this is my quilting mm -hmm. here. And then I just want to sort of show you. So, those um, darts, if you like, I give the shape to the, the actual bag, the base right. of the bag. So, what you want to do is actually, let's just pop that like that. You want to match the bosal front and back. And I find using a clip like that is really good. And then we're going to sew that side and then do the same with the other side. Um, so I'll do that again in a moment. Um, but I thought it was quite useful to show people um, who've never maybe used a magnetic clasp. Yeah, no, that to, is really useful. Yeah, how to actually so you put that uh, in attach one. In the lining before. Yeah, one, um, the narrow one is in the lining. And then the thicker one is in the front of the bag. So I'll show you both of those. Okay, so the um, the female. Yep. No, the male's in the lining. The male's in the lining and the female's in the actual bag okay. itself. So, um, so I've marked, and she does tell you exactly how much um, space. Okay. So if I just bring this over, she says, apply the second half of snap to the flap flap lining centrally one and a half inches or four centimeters from the scalloped edge okay so you'll mark your fabric um one and a half inches i'm actually going to just make them oh there is this little mark i've used um a friction pen mm. just to ma mark this and i've marked on the front and the back because what I wanted to do, I would normally um, cut a piece of um, interfacing or something like that. Right. And of course, I didn't bring any with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I've just um, cut a piece of fabric, which is absolutely fine. So I'm going so to lay that. So you just want to put something between yep. the clasp and the outer fabric. Yep. So I'm going to lay that over the top. And again. So if you want to buy any of the air erasable plants, pens or the magnetic or not the magnet or the magnetic clasp or the fabric clips that car is using then just have a quick look on the website they're all on there um the clips are particularly brilliant i've got three boxes of them and i use them all the time just going to see i've got a glue pen i was just going to hold okay. that in place with a glue pen don't worry um what i'll do is so you you've marked um the positioning of that clasp mm. and then you'll use your pen or um you know chalk or something like that to just mark these vertical lines here nice and then the way i normally do it is um i would stick that down somehow but there's no um glue pen that's okay didn't oh, do very well today did i no, i don't think I've got one this side <laughs> don't either. worry no i haven't um I is just fold that in half like that and you're going to make a little snip 
Oh, through the through the fabric and that just a little one and that's going to be where you're going to position okay where you're going to position the actual oh yeah now i can see those really well okay and then we're going to just turn that round because i've got the slash in the fabric that's mm. where that's going to go through where the other side's going to go through like that okay yeah and then you take the washer and in fact i found it easier to lean this on something so that you're not damaging the actual clasp itself. oh okay yeah yes. you're protecting the the shine of the clasp so you'll put that um over there like that and then just push those back and you can just do that by hand yeah so that's the lining so that's the clasp on the lining um, I'm just going to do the same. You don't need to add anything to this because you've already got the bosal there. So you don't need to add any extra fabric or interfacing or anything like that. And does she tell you where to put that yes, part? Yes, so that part is right near the beginning and she says to put the snap in um, five inches down from the top. Okay. So you'll measure five inches down from the top. So I've just made two marks there. Again, this is the way I find it um, easiest. You just fold that in half. Don't worry too much as well about the bosal. I know when I was stitching with it and also um, folding it like this, you think, oh my gosh, you know, there's lots of creases. That mm. comes out completely. Once you oh, iron does it, it oh, okay. comes out completely. Even though it's glued on. Yes. They cut you, you can yep. get rid of the creases. So don't worry about right. um, the creases or anything. And in fact, sort of after time, they you know they come out. Because so. sometimes with some interfacings, when you press them on and you fold it, the crease yes. stays, doesn't yes. it? But not yes. with this. So, that's good. so again, I'm just going to use that part just to make sure that I don't scratch the um, clasp. So I've got the two teeth coming through the mm. fabric there like that. And then I'll just pop the washer on top. Okay. So like that. Okay, so that's your clasp Brilliant. on the front and the back. So we've got about 15 minutes left. Yep, I'm going to do um, take this over and do my little shapes to make sort of like a more three-dimensional um, shape to the bottom of the bag. And you use the bosal. Oh, I need to change the stitch length. Use the bosal as your stitching line. And there's no need to go forward and backwards. You can if you want to, but um, there's no need because this is going to be within the seam. So we'll do the same on the other side. And then the next stage will be actually machining the flap together. So I'm just do that. And there you can see you've got the shape of your bag coming nice. together. That's lovely, isn't it? Just okay. those little um, edges, those little darts make yes. quite a difference Yes, just makes such a difference. It, so pop those to one side yeah. and then you'll take your um, the flap. So we've got the front and the back. One part of the flap has got the bosal adhered to it. Mm. The other part of your flap has got the catch and then Again, just match those up. I'm going to put a couple of clips in. And we're going to stitch all the way around the scalloped edge. Yeah, you can sort of feel, you can see the bag coming along now. Yes. It's taking shape. It is. So the lining is. is the same size as the outside, but yes. both are bigger than the bosal. Yes, they are. And I'll show you the lining in a moment. So all I'm going to do is just machine mm. all the way around curve there okay oh. well thanks for all your messages we get lots of lovely messages oh, Cara. thank you they're really enjoying your demo thank you thank you hope you're learning well Cara knows loads loads and loads <laughs> if you've got any questions for her, most things she knows um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she 
<laughs> so she has been sewing for quite a few years and doesn't really? know. Yes, quite a few years. Really? She's a lot of experience. <laughs> I um, still learn. I don't know about you. Well, um, I know. I said in my last hour, I demonstrated some biased tape makers. I mean, you know how long I've been sewing for? I have never used. Oh, I love how have them. I, and do you know why I've never used them? Because I thought, oh, they look like little gadgets. I bet they're rubbish. Oh, no, honestly, they are incredible. So, I know. I've been completely transformed because last night I thought, well, I'm going to have a go with these. I bet they're not, you know bias tape maker do you know i had make so much bias binding and i do all the pressing it in oh half and then open goodness, it up no I know. how can that have happened have i never used one honestly um i'm i'm just amazed uh, you know i will whilst i'm sewing i will carry on just learning i know learning, well even learning. something as simple as that that i would i mean obviously there's lots of new gadgets that come out all the time and you learn about yes but i have never used a bias tape maker my life has changed that's it now <laughs> That's it. And I just love making matching. Um, well, I do bias all the time binding. as well. Yes, yeah, but it just makes such a difference. I don't know difference. why. I just because I think because they're so simple. I thought, well, you know, I'm sure they won't be as good as doing it as well. Well, transformed. That's it. That's it. Transformed. Sometimes you know you buy gadgets that are quite expensive as well, and they're not very good. It just depends, doesn't it? I'd, I used to teach um, a sewing class, and mm. one of the things that we covered was bias binding and you know self-made yeah and um i can always remember i think i did three four years of it and every time i showed people how to use those <laughs> pieces of it they looked at it and they said well what do you do and mm. you know you show just, them how to do it and they were just like oh. i yeah. know and it's because it's such a simple piece yes. of equipment isn't it yes and it's great you can get them in all different sizes as well that's it yes i'm gonna get one of each now Okay. Oh, look, I, you know, I've just seen the glue pen it's hanging up on the, um, but it's actually hanging on the thing oh, in the packaging. Typical. How did I not see that? Either? How so did I not see that? It was we fine. We, we managed. We managed. <laughs> so you sewed together so all the way round, but I've, left a hole. Yeah, I've gone all the way round and used the um, edge of the so bow you sew just You don't sew on the bows or No. Just no, outside. Unless you just happen to come off the okay head. but in theory <laughs> in theory, theory just yeah. outside yeah just outside so once you've done that um i found i love using pinking shears to go well. around that curves. is one thing i do use yeah i had to treat myself to um a new pair of pinking shears i think i got it for um christmas or something as a present mm. somebody asked me what i would like for christmas and i said a pair of pinking shears because I've got about three or four pairs, but they're so old now. Um, one of them, the handle I don't know went. whether you can sharpen pinking shears or not. I've no idea. Um, mm. Some people say if you cut um, foil, that can sometimes... Yes, and yeah. I wonder whether that actually works. With, I don't with know if anybody, if anybody is... Yes. Because yeah. the problem is, it's all right if you're cutting paper, but when you're cutting fabric, particularly if it's something with a bit of structure, if they're not really sharp, it sort of does the edges a bit. Okay. And we've got pinking shears. Oh, lovely. Oh, purple ones. Oh, I like these. These are nice, aren't they? <laughs> oh, I like these. That's a nice size, actually. Then um, nine inches long. Yes. Yeah. Sadly, I can't get them out of the packaging because they've got a, a plastic. So if you want some pinking shears, I use mine all the time for dressmaking as yes. well. Because I can't be bothered to overlock the seams. The seam lattice, <laughs> so I use these instead. Because vintage dresses are always pinked yes. on the seam allowances, aren't oh, they? Oh, definitely, mm. definitely. How much are those? Forty ninety nine. That's not bad, is it? It's a really good price. It's quite a good price. Mm. Um, Treat so yourself. I pinked all the way round, and um, then we turn this. Yeah. And because you've got the bow saw there, it turns really easily. So you don't have to bother sort of with pressing the seams open on that then? No, you don't. The only thing that I would say is obviously you, you want your seam to be flat. Yeah, so you so press it then, but yeah. beforehand you don't need to yeah. use the... Yeah, and then what you can do is do your top stitching round. Oh yes, so you've done that on this one. Yeah, that's if there's time, if, have I got time? Thank you. Uh, well, we've, yeah, yeah, we've got yeah. seven minutes. Okay, we'll see that's how That's very neat. <laughs> How do you keep it that neat then? Um, top, top neat, top stitch e tip. Experience. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, Sewing slowly. Um, no, lengthening your stitch. Okay. And then. What are you on about three mil? I'm on three. Okay. And then um, matching your uh, foot and decide how deep you want your um, right. the actual. Um, top yeah. stitching 
and I don't mind actually. I've I've got mine here. I would say it's about a quarter of yeah, an inch. Yeah, yeah, it's probably um, is is quite good. And then all I would say is I would have pressed this beforehand. Yeah. But um, just try and keep your um, where you're guiding the edge of the fabric, and just fold it under. Just make sure that your edges are nice and um, oh, okay. neat and everything. It does give it a really nice finishing touch, doesn't it? It does. It's like the um, top stitching on the bottom, um, having that yeah. like that as well. So no, then, it does make a, a difference. Yeah. So once you've done the top stitching, the next stage is the handles. And the handles um, is like a bias binding. Oh. <laughs> give me your um, nice tape maker this big. Yeah. I don't know you can get this. is quite wide, isn't it? I don't know whether you can get one that big. Um, so... You will cut your fabric, I think it's three inches wide by 15 inches long. But if you want to have a longer strap, you can do. And if you want to have a wider strap. The other thing is, um, because you, you've actually got four layers of fabric, I think, altogether, there's no interfacing or padding or anything oh, okay. in the strap. So it's quite a nice, soft Yeah, I know. I think it's a nice length, but it does feel quite nice. I mean, I guess if you wanted to add structure to it, you, can. you could do, couldn't yeah. you? You could put interfacing in or webbing Definitely. or whatever. Definitely. But, you know, this isn't your sort of full-on take-everything-you-own handbag anyway, is it? No. This is a pretty decorative handbag, so you probably don't need a really strong strap on it. I don't know whether this is as good as the other I one. Matches, <laughs> I think it matches my outfit. Ah, but yeah, but you, you haven't pressed it under pressure. No, no. So, um, so I've top stitched all the way around the edge yes. like that. Um, and then you've got obviously your mm. catch on the inside, which is nice. So you've pressed all the way around like that. We've done our darts. Mm. Um, as I say, we, we just follow the instructions that Debbie tells you. So we've, we've done this part. Mm -hmm. We've done the darts there. Um, she explains all of that. She explains about transferring the dart shapes, but I actually yeah. use the um, bosal as my um, pattern for my lining. Um, so you sew the lining in exactly the same way. Just to get my lining here. So the lining's exactly the same. Okay, so and you so sew the darts in. So yeah, you've got the darts there. The only difference is that you leave a gap at the bottom for turning. Oh, of course. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so your lining is exactly the same. Um, so we've gone all the way around there. Um, then you sew the lining together. Mm -hmm. Sew the flat pieces together, which I've done. The top stitching. The strap. So the strap is... Just mm -hmm. pop that there. Your um, 15 inches... That one's a lot longer. I've actually done a very long strap there. Well, but you can adjust it. I mean, I can. suppose what you could do is just cut, put a tape measure over your shoulder and see where you yes. want it to end up. Yeah. Because you could have it as like a crossbody bag. You could. If you made the strap a lot longer, because yeah. I think I'd struggle a bit, be a bit, you know. But if you made, <laughs> so you could have it like that, yes. but just make the strap longer. Yes, you? yeah. So you cut your Ooh. fabric, so you fold that in half, and then you um, match the raw right. edge to the okay. fold, raw edge to the fold, fold it like that, press it, and then, as if by magic, <gasps> you do your top stitching either side. Okay. So it's very, very simple to yeah, do. Yeah, that's nice so, and easy. Um, so you've done all of this. So she's taken you through all of that, um, number 12. So the next part, before you actually um, attach the front and the back together, is you'll attach your straps to um, the top of the back panel. So the back panel is the one without the clasp. Mm. And you want your straps to just be to the edge. You don't want the straps to actually go over the raw edges there. You want your straps to um, go in slightly from the bosal um, because if you have them there, then you're going to lose them completely oh, yes, when you're you in yes, the seam you can allowance. See on, you can see on here how yeah. they're just slightly within yeah. the seams, yeah. but only like a quarter of an inch inside that's the right, seams. That's right, that's right. So just, and then make sure that your strap is all the right way around. 
Yeah, I have sewn in straps where you and turn it right side out and you think, hmm, that's quite annoying, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because that's twisted. twisted. And it's always best, again, to mm. double check. Yes, and this one isn't. This one is beautiful. Not then twisted at all. Just double you check. You only sew in one twisted strap. And then, <laughs> yes. So I'm just going to run a couple of stitches there just to um, make sure that they mm. stay in position. So... Are we doing okay time-wise? We've got two minutes left. Oh, bless you. Right. Maximum. I'm going to take... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the countdown clock is going... Do, 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 do. And the other one. No pressure. Oh. That over. <laughs> oh. Then the next stage is you're actually going to insert the flap okay. and you're going to, um, you want to make sure that the flap, the um, clasp is on the right mm. side of the fabric. So we're going to actually just attach that there. Um, I'm going to whiz across there. Okay. Oh, so the flap sits just slightly within yes. so that when you sew the front and the back together, yep. it doesn't get caught in those seams. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? So we just go across there. So the one that you're doing at the moment is the red and orange roses, if you want to buy that one. And that one's where you get the pattern, the pre-made, the pre-cut pieces of bosal, half a metre of the rose fabric and half a metre of the red striped fabric. And remember, it's a pop poplin fabric, so it's really lovely and soft and light, but it's 100% cotton. So yeah, show us what you've done there. So and I've then machined we'll across there, and then um, you will put right sides together. And in fact, because you're not going to be stitching across here, yeah. you can actually flip that out of the way and you're going to be stitching, and again, use the bosal as your seam. Mm. Um, you're going to be stitching all the way around there. Match your darts, your shapes, and okay. I put one dart in one direction, the other dart in the other direction. And then you turn it right sides out. Then you turn it right sides out, and then pop that inside your lining, and then your machine, the two together, round the top Brilliant. turn it all the way through mm. top stitch it again and then it's done well that's really quick then actually so yeah. i mean although you haven't constructed the whole thing yeah it is sort of an hour or two isn't it oh gosh yes definitely i mean we didn't have a whole hour no did we? no so you but could in two hours you do definitely do definitely, it definitely definitely right and so you're back with us at 11. i am and we're going to do bears Bear's really excited by this. It's a lovely book. Ah, oh, and it's mm. a lovely book, and that bear is just so know, characterful. He is, he is yeah. lovely. And I really like the fabric that he's in. Yes, the nice fabric's lovely. Fabric. Yeah. So we'll see you again at 11 yes. o'clock. And thank you so much. No problem. Thank and you. And we'll be talking bears. Yes. Bears and linen. You. Bears and linen. Yes. So let's just recap so if you enjoyed um Cara's demonstration obviously you really want to make this bag because it's so lovely isn't it so let's show this the kit for this one first so this is called pink and orange roses um so you get the pattern which has got all the instructions with photographic walkthroughs as Cara was showing us it's also got all the pattern pieces so that you can make another one You've got the pre-cut bosal pieces, and bosal is a foam stabiliser that is, you can iron on on one side onto the fabric. There's three pieces, all there cut, with all the darts in there as well, and the pattern. And then in this pack, you've got half a metre of poplin fabric in a navy with a white spot, and then half a metre of the cotton poplin, which is blue with the floral pattern. And they pick up, you know, they're very, a really lovely contrast. So you've got the really sort of the boldness of the navy contrasting with the softness of the flowers, which works really well. And remember, with these bags, you can mix and match. So you can have, the, you could have the handle in the navy, or you could have the flap in the navy. You can swap them all around because, you know, although there's a pattern and there's instructions, make you should make the bag your own. You can have it whatever you like. Um, the bag that Cara demonstrated for us is called the red and orange roses so again you get the pattern you get the pre-cut bosal pieces you get half a meter 
of this floral fabric which has got an ivory colored background and red pink yellowy uh, roses with um sort of sage green leaves and then you also get half a meter of this red stripe and the red in the stripe really picks up the sort of the deeper red in the roses so they go really well together and I love this sort of mix of stripe and floral it's really popular stripe floral spot floral check floral and amazingly because this never happens normally the most popular one is the one that we've made up the second most popular one that they, we demoed but the one that hasn't been made up at all is the most popular who would have known who would have known pink is obviously pink is in today isn't it so in the small pink and white flowers bundle you get the pattern the pre-cut bosal pieces half a meter of this lovely floral feature print she's got a dusky pink background with white daisies and little pink rosebuds and the deeper pink in the rosebuds is echoed in the deep pink of the spot fabric and remember, you know, there's something about the floral and the spot or the floral and the stripe or the floral and the check that go together really well. It's just, it's a big contrast. And by contrasting the fabrics so much, they both stand out. So they both speak for themselves. So if you want to buy just the instructions and the bows or because you've got your own fabric or you want to make something specifically to match something then we are offering that as an option as well that's 19.99 and you get the full pattern which remember has the instructions with the walkthrough photographs and also with the pattern pieces um, that's in there and the link to the video tutorial so you can either watch Cara back on YouTube or you can watch Debbie making it and you get the pre-cut stabilizer pieces as well so that's the other pack so just before we go to the break and i make myself a cup of tea um go and have a look at the website so one of our most popular fab fabrics machines even it's a machine thought it was a piece of fabric the elna 550 sewing machine which is at 499 pounds is back in stock we've had it out for a while but we have got it now and remember we've now got our split pay so it's available with the three split pay option so you can pay one payment today of 166 pounds and 33 pence and that's what you get it home for so that's yours today and then you will have the other two payments taken in the, over the three months so you get a fantastic machine now you know whether this machine is ideal for you know at, at that price you think oh well it's obviously for experienced so it's not it's really good for beginners it's got everything you need all the sort of the basic features and more sometimes you know there's no point really in buying a beginner's machine because within a few weeks months and then a year you're now going to be an intermediate so you will need a machine like this and the reason that we sell these elna machines is they're good quality they actually work. So they're really worth it. They're an investment in your sewing future. Anyway, after the break, we have got a shashko hour. Had Susan Briscoe in a couple of hours, a couple of hours, a couple of weeks ago. She was brilliant. We did lo lo loads about shashko. Anyway, so in the next hour, we've got books, patterns, pre-printed fabric, needles, thread, everything you need. So um, I will see you in just a couple of minutes for all things shashko. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And welcome back to Sewing Street and we are now going to do the Shashko Hour. I really like Shashko. Um, well, I like embroidery anyway. Embroidery is one of my passions. Well, I like all sorts of sewing, but I particularly, I think, I like the meditative, that's a good word, the meditative quality of embroidery. I like the fact that I can sit and do it in front of the TV. And I like Shashko because it has quite a, well, it has an extremely long heritage for it. But I like the way that it was invented originally to strengthen fabric. So a lot of, own obviously comes from Japan and they used the shashko to they would um, embroider on top of particularly work clothes because it made it a bit stronger and then obviously all the women who were embroidering these things used different patterns and motifs and things so it's got a really a proper sort of a useful history to it and then as it's gone over time it has become more decorative and now you can do it you don't just use it to strengthen clothes you use it um, to create cushions and wall hangings and samplers and all sorts of things Anyway, we had on uh, a couple of weeks ago, Susan Briscoe, who is the queen of Shashko. She has spent most of her life sort of learning Shashko, teaching Shashko, designing it, researching it. She's got two brilliant books, which luckily we've got on air today. Now, the first one is this one, The Ultimate Shashko Source Book. 
So if you want to see her show, she did two Shashko shows for us on the 28th of September. Um, so you can watch those back on YouTube where she talks in detail. We had lovely chats all about, she, well, she explained the whole point of Shashko and, and why it was done. But she also demonstrates all the stitches as well. So it's well worth watching that back. This book is really good because it explains everything you need to know from, from, should we have a little look through? It is really, I mean, because it covers all of the, the history, the introduction, it's a bit of a coffee table book as well. It's something you can curl up on the sofa, put the telly on, put the fire on and read. So it's got the whole history. So you can see why it was done. And she's got photos of examples of old Shashko and how it works. Shashko means um, little stab because basically that's how it's done. All it is done is using a little running stitch. So it's tiny little stabs of the fabric. So the whole, got all the history in the introduction. Then she goes straight into equipment and materials, which is important, isn't it? What fabric do you need? What thread do you need? And what other tools do you need? And she explains that, I mean, originally it was just ordinary fabric and needles. As we've moved on, things have become a bit more sophisticated. And now you can buy specific Shashko thread that is exactly the right thickness that works well on the fabric. You can also buy specific Shashko needles, um, which we have for sale here today as well. We'll go through those in a moment. So we've got all the right materials you need, but she explains all of that. She, how do you mark your fabric? How do you do it? What's, you know, and I like the way in it that she's shown you seven different sorts of fabric marking and how they work and what's the best way to do it. Then she moves into the basic techniques. So how you draw the grid, because it is all done in a grid formation. Um, how to cut, she showed us when she came on, when, because the thread is sold in hanks where the thread is all looped round and she shows you how to sort of cut knot and then replat them, the best way of using them, which is lovely. And then obviously the stitches. She uses a combination of diagrams as well as photographs and I think that works really well because sometimes only a diagram works. There's a special knot that you use, uh, I, remember, I can't remember how to pronounce it, a Hatamasubi knot, um, something like that for joining threads and that's shown as diagrams which is brilliant because if you did a photograph I don't think the way that the thread loops you have to loop one thread with another and showing you how to do that works well but when she shows you the sewing and how you pick up all the different stitches she shows that with photographs so I think she's used different visual techniques in the way that work the best rather than saying well I'm only going to use photos then different things that you can make so she's got long samplers so We've got all of the introduction, all the very basic how you do it that you can work through. And then she's got lots and lots of projects. So she's got, you know, like things like this, the coasters, they're really, really good for beginners. So this is small projects. But, you know, and it's people think, oh, Shashko, what is that? That's like, oh, that must be really complicated. But it really isn't. It is basically a running stitch across fabric so it's in you know it's there instantly because the thread is quite thick it stands up on the fabric really well so you immediately see what you've done but you're stitching heritage here you know this goes back centuries this was used to make clothes stronger what i love about it i mean and it is used very much as you can make items there's a lot of items in this book but i follow a lot of people on pinterest who do it and they do it on jeans so you can use it to patch your jeans you can use one of these patterns there's loads of different patterns in here um if we go to the back of the book lots and lots and lots of different patterns all the different ones you can do but because traditionally it was worked on blue with the white on a pair of jeans it looks lovely you could use it to patch a hole or you just do different areas or maybe on a denim jacket you could just work the um, elbow patches so anyway you move through and there's lovely cushions i mean that's beautiful isn't it that sample cushion that's just a plain blue linen fabric but once it's worked with these stitches it looks really really expensive that looks like something very, very high end, high street store. Um, the tote bag's lovely, isn't it? So that's just using a simple check fabric. But once embellished with the Shashko stitching, it looks incredible. It, I mean, it does. What I love about it is it looks cleverer and more complex than it actually is. And that's always good, isn't it? But then when she talks about how to make it, again, you've got diagrams and you've got photographs, depending on which she thinks works the best. Um, we've got a curtain, 
and move on to these little um, drawstring bags. But you know, you could use these for decorating anything. If you've got a denim pinafore, a denim dress, or well, it doesn't have to be denim, but it's just that that's a good colour. You could use it just to stitch across the top of it or around the hem. We've got another cushion. So there's quite a lot going on in this book. Beautiful table runner here. And this is using this lovely um, fabric, which we are selling as well. We'll move on to that in a minute. So this lovely striped fabric is very traditional Japanese fabric, smoogie. That's what it's called, smoogie. And we're selling that as well, as well as all the fabrics, because this is something that Susan loves and we've managed to get hold of. Now we're going to, then you move into the patterns. Isn't that lovely? Wouldn't it be lovely to do a small square of all the patterns and make a massive sampler? Because you don't have to just stick to one colour. Traditionally, it's this sort of indigo blue with the white stitching, but she's mixed in all sorts of colours. And then she shows you how to build it up. So she shows you in diagrammatic format, as well as the actual stitched piece as well. So if we can get close up into um, one that I really like, you getting close. There we go. So you can see this, this is beautiful. The hemp leaf is one of the most traditional shashko patterns, which is what this one is. So she shows you because when you do the running stitch, there are certain directions to go so that you don't sort of keep running back on yourself because you don't want to keep, you don't want to jump too far on the back from one area to another. If you work in certain directions, then you can work all the way around. And so she shows you in diagram and then she shows you here how, what it looks like when it's actually stitched. I think that's really lovely because then it makes sense because if you mark the pattern, then you follow the lines, you're not crossing over too much on the back to work from one area to another. I love these interlocking semicircles. They look like the Drunkard's Path patchwork, don't they? They look like, um, well, I think the Drunkard's Path where they all join together, or they look like your clamshell patchwork. So they kind of echoes together. You could use some pat you could use some of the wave shashko stitching in the centre of maybe a cushion, and then you could border that with clamshell or Drunkard's Path. And then you're using those sort of two disciplines together, and one will echo the other, and it will work ever so well because. You know, this is a technique that you're learning here. You use that then to do your own thing. So if we just flick through, there are loads and loads and loads of patterns, so much to inspire you. Um, so this really, this book, I mean, and at the back, we've got some really old, we've got the old stuff, but we've also got, what I like she's done as well, she's put in a gallery of inspiration using some old things, but also really contemporary pieces. What modern day Shashko people in Japan are doing, so not you old fisherman's clothes, but these are so inspiring, aren't they? And it's really nice to use this really old traditional technique and then you mix it in with the new, but you can see how you could use one of these stitches to just embellish or decorate a piece of clothing you already have. You don't have to make something new. But isn't that lovely? So that really is your ultimate Shashko book. Now this is, it's only 11 .99. In fact, when we had Susan on, she was like, I can't believe you're selling it for that. <laughs> this one, this is also by Susan. This is only six ninety nine. Now this is the perfect partner book for the ultimate Shashko book. So although in this book it does introduce the technique and how you do it, it covers it in less detail than the other book. If you only buy this one, it does tell you the tools and the materials and how to stitch. It does cover the base. Obviously it doesn't go into as much detail, doesn't give you all the patterns. So they are, this is really the project book with a little bit of, um, intro. So it does tell you how to, if you only buy this one, there is enough in itself, but paired together, they work really well because this then gives you some lovely ideas for making items. So the really simple, this is a lovely tote bag. It's, it's using the traditional hemp leaf pattern in the center. So she shows you how to do the stitching, but she also shows you how to make the project, which is quite useful. Greetings cards, I mean, that's really special, isn't it? Because you can buy these pre-cut cards or you can make your own. You could just cut a piece of card in half and cut the aperture. But what a lovely piece. And this is particularly good for a beginner because, you know, you could do this as a practice piece and then send them to all your practice pieces to somebody in a card. Um, when she shows these pictures, these are quite clever. So although it looks like, oh, that's all in different colours, the reason that she's got them in different colours is that they show the order of stitching. 
So you can see that you've got the brown line, that's one line. The red line is a nether line. So you can see the order they've done, and which is marked on here, but it shows it much easier. But it also makes you realise that how wonderful Shashko looks when you put it in a bit of colour. Lovely cushion, really like that one. That's very effective. And again, she takes you by the hand and walks you step by step through the process. She shows you the diagrams. She's got all the different stitches shown in different colours so you can see the order. And that's really nice in it. So by the time you've got through to the end of the cushion, and she's shown you really simple, just a very simple sort of overlapping back cushion. Then you've got um, table mats, or oh, little coasters. I love the pocket hanging, but it's a really nice book. But because it's written, it's written by Susan. She knows what she's talking about. She is the expert. She's written in it a way as if she's teaching you and you're at her workshop. But, <coughs> but this is, but you know, the um, traditionally Shashko is done in the hand. You don't do it in a hoop. But the hoops work really well for framing. Because remember I said at eight o'clock how how great it is that those hoops can be used for um, working embroidery in. You don't use a hoop with this because you're moving the fabric rather than the, the needle. Um, but they are great for displaying work. They look lovely. So you could make three different pieces of shashko, frame them in those three hoops that are in the early bird. If we've got any, have we got any early birds left? A few, a few, just a few. So pop one in your basket if you want to. And then that's, you know, three pieces of wall art immediately. So. Those are, make a perfect partner. They are standalone. You can have them separately, but they do go very well together. So let's move on to the um, Shashko fabric. Now, I've got loads of them, loads and loads, which is brilliant. So in the book, she explains how you can mark the fabric. Um, you know, I showed you in there, they have all the different transfer methods, whether you're using a chalk pen or a chalk liner. But the beauty of these panels is that they're pre-printed with the pattern and I'm going to open one of them. So this one, which one? I'm going to open my favourite one. Yes, I'm, well, I've got to choose my favourite one that I'm going to open first, quite like this one. So the code on this one is M-E-Y-H-98. Now, this is exactly the fabric you need. It's 100% cotton. It's hand-printed. Um, but what's great about this, which you won't get with your own transfer pencils, is that once you've sewn it, it washes out. So let me open out the piece of fabric. This is, does it say the size? Oh, it's 12 by 12 inches. So let me just open this out. So it's water soluble. OK, so what you do, all of the lines are already printed on here. So you just simply sew over them. If you look, follow the books or you can work it out for yourself. You can see what order to stitch on. So this is your cushion front. And what's great is that on the back, they've explained all of it, how to do it. I love that. So all of the ink that is used on this is water soluble. Don't use a steam iron or water spray. You actually need to dunk it in water. So what you can do is once you've stitched it, you put the whole thing into water and it will all disappear. But I actually quite like all this writing on the back. Do you know, I think if I made this into a cushion, I'd keep that. I wouldn't wash that. I'd have that on the back of my cushion because that looks lovely. So this is twelve ninety nine, which is amazing value because you'll end up with a 30 centimetre, 12 inch cushion if you make it like that. But personally, what I would do is I would use another fabric and I would border it because I think it's crying out to be framed. We've got some other, um, the Sumi fabric that I showed you earlier, we've got some of those Samugi fabrics. We've got some of those, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, I'll just show you one, but you could buy this because we're selling this one by the half meter. Oh, I'm just messing up the system now of doing these. The code for this one is YR9982. So this is sold by the half meter, but this is a Japanese fabric. So obviously it all blends together beautifully. Um, I'm just going to move these books out of the way. They're in my way. So look how lovely, move that up a bit, that looks bordering it. 
because the, the colours, they just blend beautifully. I've chosen this one specifically because it's got more blue in, in, in the others. So you could make, use this panel and it's all pre-printed, already sorted for you. And then you could make it that size. You could border it with denim. I think it would look fantastic with denim. I told you I collect old jeans. That's exactly what I would use. Or one of the Japanese fabrics in a stripe would look really good too. Um, so we have lots and lots of these panels. So now I've showed you... I'm not going to open all of them because I think I might actually get in trouble for that. But if you go to the website, we'll go through all of them now. The image for them all is on this one. So this one is um, WTYH30. Oh, I love that one. That one. So if you um, go onto the website, you can see the picture of it. Can you pull up that image? It's on its way. <laughs> so this is rabbits it's rabbits it's like swirling waves because a little picture on the front with little with little rabbits have we not got the picture of that one well we'll open that one as well then shall we luckily i can get them back in again but you can't see them in a oh Um, oh look, I, I think I might have ripped that one, so Paul's going to have to pay for this one, because I think he's the one that told me to open it. He just said, break it and you buy, which I think is really mean, because he told me to open it, and you all heard, didn't you? You heard him say that. So, <laughs> an Elliot director, he heard too. But it's only twelve ninety nine, Paul, that you've got to pay, so it's fine. Look, isn't that lovely? So... The, I'm sure if we're Susan's here, I'd ask her, what's the point of the rabbits then? It's probably some very deep, symbolical, good luck charm of Japan or something. So you've got the moon and the rabbits and these waves. Isn't that beautiful? I do like that. I do like the background. But you remember, you don't have to use the white. This is printed in white because it shows up really well. But you could use any, you could use all different coloured threads for this. There's lot, we've got some threads we'll show you in a minute. Because you can actually get variegated threads as well, where the thread colour changes as you move along the skein. So, that, there are lots and lots of these. Um, I've got to try and get them back in the right packets. Um, we're not... We're not, I'm not allowed to open up any more of them, which is a bit mean, really, isn't it? Because um, you can't see them as well. So I'm not allowed to open any more, but I'm going to explain them to you. So we've got another one. Oh, this is lovely. What, a, a, HXYH18, that is called Chasco Cloth Autumn, and that features dragonflies. Really like that one. If I come up there, you can actually get close onto that one so you can see. That's got dragonflies. Again, that's a 12-inch square. That's lovely, isn't it? Can you see the dragonflies? Dragonflies and clouds or waves. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, so, I mean, they don't have to be cushions. In fact, if you bought a few of these, you could make them into a quilt. So if you had four of them, you could make them into quite a decent quilt, put them some sash in between them. You'd end up, like, with a metre and a half, not make a nice lap quilt. So now you've got the camera there. One moment. Look at that. Magic. It's good, isn't it? I'll just move it a little bit. So this is the next one. The code is CDYH83, and that one is called Cumulus Cloud. So look how all the clouds in that one are filled with different patterns. That's a bit sampler. It is. It's called cu Cumulus Cloud. And we've done the dragonfly. Now, there's another one. This one is actually called, this one is DVYH83. Oh, I've just swapped it on the overhead for you. There we go. So, this one is called Dragonfly. Again, it's a 12 by 12 inches. I'm just going to straighten it out. Look at that. Look at that. That's magic. Lots of detail. It's almost like um, plane, aeroplane lines in the sky, but it's dragonflies, isn't it? They're flying so fast, they've created lines. But I really like that one. Again, it's 12 by 12 inches. It's wash, wash out a ball. This one is ZVYH92, and this is called Seasons. And this one features, well, I guess it's all the different circles of the different seasons. That's really intricate, isn't it? I do think I would buy four of these because together 
they'd be 60 by 60 centimetres, which would be 24 inches square. But if you put the sashing and the binding in, you'd have more. But if you bought 16 of them, you could make them into the most beautiful sampler quilt. And you know, think with all the, they're getting a bit colder in the evenings, this is the perfect time to be sitting down doing a bit of shashko. So if you, if you pop the ultimate shashko source book, book in your basket and pick some of some of these you could start off with just one or think actually no this is the time when I'm going to really invest into this we've also got these others so oh hang on there's two more in the same sort of one so this one is called two cranes which is c-l-y-h 86 the cranes I know are a very traditional symbol of Japan but aren't they lovely they're sort of intertwined like they're flying together but they've they form the sort of the opposite corners of the squares. That's very graceful, isn't it? But quite dynamic as well, that the way that they're moving. I like those. Um, and then finally in this set is Noshi, which is TGYH04. And that features like ribbons, ribbons and bows. And each ribbon is filled with a slightly different shashko pattern again all printed onto the fabric to make it really really easy for you and if you haven't got the book and you haven't got the instructions remember that the instructions are printed on the other side of the piece of fabric which you can use for the back so it's all there for you if you don't have the other things um, we'll just go through that's all of the panels so there's one two three four five there's eight of those that are all the same size and the same type. So if you wanted to get all of those, they would make a fantastic set. Now we're going to move on to these panels. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these, not eight. Um, these come in different colours. So you've got the indigo colour, but you've also got a mid blue, like a natural linen and a grey and a browny sort of ochre colour. And these vary very much in complexity. So should we, I'm going to open up this one because I quite like this blue. Mm -hmm. So the code on this one is HVYH14. Again, these are pre-printed in a washable ink. Now, the size of this one is 32 by 32 centimetres square. So very, very similar. Those were 30 centimetres, almost the same. So they really are mix and match. You could use them with the other one. And it does have, with this one, you haven't got the instructions printed on one side. You've just got the plain back. But isn't that lovely? So this one is really simple. I love this colour. I would say this is like an... I don't know whether anyone else calls it that. that. I think that's an Air Force blue. It's like a petrol blue. So it is more blue than green, but it's a lovely shade. And this is very, very simple. It's just circles. And what's lovely about it, if you're struggling to start with to get the, your running stitches to be the same length and get them even, they are printed on here. So the way that Shashko works, you don't stitch in one motion. You don't come up with a needle, down with a needle, up with a needle. You um, pivot the needle into the fabric so you pick up lots and lots of stitches at the same time um, a little bit harder when you're doing curves to pick up you can't pick up as many but once you've probably got along the bottom along this row you will be brilliant and by the time you've gone on the second row you'll be an expert this is a really good way of practicing because this is quite a simple design once it's finished pop it all into water and um, the lines will design will disappear as if by magic so I'll put that one there so I can put that back later. Um, we've got loads of shashko in this hour, so I'd love to spend a little bit longer on each one, but I can't. So this is the next one. Um, this is QVYH17. Um, now I can't show you that one because that's in the packet. That's on, that's on an indigo very very deep indigo fabric but you can see the pattern on that one it's sort of like a block pattern but that's um the indigo is the most traditional it's usually our most popular but as susan says you know they did used to use other colors in japan i think people always think of the navy and white but you don't have to it's the technique more um we've then that's the last navy one i do like this this code is ubyh04 
This one, again, it's the circles, exactly the same as that Air Force blue one, but on a very natural linen. It's got a real fleck to it. So if you wanted to make a matching pair of cushions, this one and the blue one that I showed you at the beginning would go perfectly together because it's the same pattern, just a different colour fabric. So you could use different threads on them. But that's a lovely one as well. Um, and then this one is on, this is... KWY, it's 92, on a really clean, bright white fabric. And this is like um, a brick pattern. You can see in that, that one's really lovely. Really traditional, but wouldn't that look lovely in a very deep blue thread? Or even, you know, any colour you could use on this. You could use the a brown ochre thread for a really neutral look. You know, it's kind of an, a deep, natural colour. Or you could go blue for that real blue and white effect. Um, there's another cream, this one is creamier background. This is GCYH04. This is like a herringbone effect. And again, remember that all of these are the same size. They're all 32 by 32. Um, actually, actually, I've just realised, I've just realised that, and I'm going to open this one, that this white one is different. It has more than one pattern on it. So the code on this one is KWYH92. So... The circles ones I showed you, they are the full 32 centimetre square, but this white one isn't. This is the coasters, isn't it? So, what you have on this one, and, this, and the same with this navy one, exactly the same, is that there are four... Well, they can be coasters, or you can use them for a sampler quilt. You can use them for whatever you like. But that's the back of the coaster. That's the front of the coaster. And we have the same in the navy. But you could use them. You could sew them all together. You could buy more than one pack and sew them. And to make, you know, what I would do is because this is coasters as well, you could frame them if you wanted. But what I would do is I would buy some of the white ones, some of the blue ones, and sew them all together, put some sashing strips between them, and what a fantastic quilt they'd be. But I would have that on the wall, though. Wouldn't bother with that on the bed. That would be on the wall. Um, then there's the grey ones. That's exactly the same, and those are coasters as well, and the code for that is EGYH16. The patterns on this one are slightly different. If you can get a close-up on that, that's a lovely, really soft grey, but you can see that the patterns on that one are different then yeah they're sort of more geometric look at that like like looks like moroccan tiles although i think japanese stitching and moroccans are quite different but it has that same sort of geometric heritage and then just the simple crosses there so we've got a mixture of um cushion now this one i really like Let, this is a um this is your bigger design again this is your cushion design with a lovely sort of soft soft brown it's, it's called olive green but it's more of a a soft brown it's the brown end of green rather than the green end of brown and it features just little crosses they're very very simple but a lovely background color now i would stitch that using a cream thread so it didn't shout on it but just stood up just beautifully but wouldn't it look lovely on your sofa really neutral fitting with most most settings Let's do some thread. I'm going to just have to put these to one side that I've taken out of their packs. So, thread. Now, Japanese shashko thread is different to normal. It's not stranded cotton. It's the weight of almost a cotton abrode. What I've got here is a bundle of threads, and um, but not that bundle. Why aren't we doing that bundle? Okay. Yes. So we've got a bundle of thread here. We'll go through that other bundle in a minute. And you get your needles. Now the Shashko needles, can we have a look at those? So you can buy the Shashko needles separately, but you can also buy them in this bundle. But let me just tell you about the needles. So you get one ecru and one navy. So this is your... This is your starter bundle if you haven't done Shashka before. So what I would say is buy one of the panels, doesn't matter which one, which whatever one you like the most. And then if you buy the bundle, you've got the needles. There's three of them. The Shashko needles are longer 
the normal needles. Um, they are also made in a way because they because you're picking up, you're pivoting the needle all the time, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, to pick up the um, the little stitches. They need to be quite strong. They need to not be brittle and break. And these are made in that way. They also have to have quite a big eye because the thread, I told you, it's matte. It's a bit like a cotton of Brody. It's more four to six strands thickness of stranded cotton. It's that sort of weight. But it's very strong as well because traditionally it would have been very strong. And also you're going to be running through a lot of... Um, stitches and then you need to pull them all through the fabric so in this bundle for £11.47 you get the pack of three needles you get the accru thread and the navy thread and there's 40 meters of thread on each of these now if you think if you bought a skein of stranded cotton there's eight meters on that there's 40 meters so one of these is equivalent to five skeins of stranded cotton so you'd be able to do a whole cushion cover easily with one of these so if you want to have a go at shashko i would say Get this bundle because those have got your basic threads. Buy a couple of the small panels and the Ultimate Shashka book. And that's it. You're sorted. Um, perfect present. If you know someone who sews or would like to have a go or has done a little bit of embroidery but hasn't got something, this is the perfect time to get all of that for them. Now, if you're into Shashka, you've tried it and you've used normal needle, we are selling the needles just on their own, not in the bundle. These are just what you mean. They're only £3.49 which is almost the same price as 3 PMP, isn't it? Only £3.49. But they are perfect because they, well, there's three of them. So they will keep you going for quite a long time. But they are made specifically for Shashko. So that's what you need. Um, we're also selling, you can buy just the one skein of thread. This is EY9983. Now, there's 100 metres in this. This is your traditional ecru thread which would be used you know when we think of traditional shashka we're thinking this panel here this navy panel indigo we're thinking the cream thread that's only two i know that's only 2.99 remember there's a hundred meters in there i know that's so cheap isn't it 2.99 for a hundred meters so i would pop by 100 meters thread, and, and this is the right thread. You know, you can use stranded cotton for shashko. You can do that. But if you buy the right thread, particularly if you want to start moving on to embellishing clothes, jackets, trousers, jeans, all that sort of thing, you need the colour and the strength of this thread. And this is the really traditional. So if you have a panel, the thread, a pack of needles, that's you started. And um, probably the book too. And the book as well. Um, we've also got a pack of... A bundle which is um, ILUU87. Now, in this bundle, you get loads of thread because remember, I said it doesn't, we don't have to just use a crew and navy, we could use all sorts of colours. So, we've got yellow, mustard, a variegated green. And what's lo why am I turning around? What's lovely about the variegated green? Well, and there's also a variegated purple, and a variegated pink, and a variegated turquoise. Um, they change colour along the length. So if you want to create a different colour look, if you're stitching these, because you're stitching in long rows and round around in circles, you don't need to think about changing colour and do you want different shades, because they're all in here. So in this pack, you get 10 20 metre skeins. So you get those four variegated colours and then you get a gold these colours by the way they've been specially selected because they are often the traditionally used colours in shashko or what the more contemporary designers are doing now so susan has actually selected these colours herself so there's gold mustard like a raspberry red obviously the traditional ecru a lovely really lovely pink and I, what i like about this pink is it blends beautifully with navy it's that sort of pink it's um you can yeah so christina's asked can you use shashko threads for quilting yes of course you can lots of this is why shashko has become so popular amongst the quilting community a lot of people do use shashko in their quilting as well obviously it's thicker thread what people do is you can quilt with it, um, and I did ask Susan about this, and she says what she tends to do if she's quilting a shashko is she'll embroider with the shashko and then she'll quilt it afterwards. But you can use it for quilting. I mean, it's obviously a bit thicker, so you would have to use bigger stitches. You're not going to be able to do your tiny little 
um, hand quilting stitches because you've got to go through the layers of the top, the wadding in the back. But you can use it for quilting, but you'll have to use bigger stitches. But the pink and the green, they all go really well with the traditional indigo, but also any of those sort of muted greys and ochres um, and khakis that, that the fabric panels are printed in. So $14.99 for 200 metres of thread is very good value and again you know if you haven't tried shako before you think i want to have a go you don't want to just buy one skein and then think well i really like that and i've got I've got any left get it all in one go because that's a really nice pack and this is the proper stuff it is i think sometimes if you're trying a new technique and you want to do something to start off with get the right things because when you don't have the right stuff it never looks the same right now i'm going to move on to the fabric now we talked about this fabric earlier because i was showing you how it looks really good when you frame pieces so the code this is one we looked at earlier so we'll do it again it's why yr9982 um this is lovely striped fabric it's yarn dyed striped, which means it's not printed. The yarn is dyed and then it's a woven stripe. It's a really nice quality. It's got a really nice weight for it. So Susan often uses it for cushions and bag making. So although it's 100% cotton, it has a little bit more substance. You can use it for quilting. It's not a heavyweight fabric, but it just has a little bit more substance than normal quilting cotton. So it does work very well for home wares, but it works really well in the quilting as well. Now, the way that this is woven is that it has a black thread going one way and coloured threads going the other. So that black thread pops up and it runs throughout. And I can't remember which one, which one's the warp and which one's the weft, but the black, but I can't remember which one is, which is the black and which I think, I think the um, black thread goes across, I think. But anyway, because it's woven in that way, it, you can see that black thread popping up here in a way, a bit like, you know, when you have linen and you see that woven and you have those little sort of flecks and seeds in it it's a bit like this but the colors in it again are very traditional colors which are actually echoed you can see that they're the right colors because they're echo echoed in this fabric pack you've got the green which is the same green in there you've got the mustard so these are the colors that are used traditionally in sh in shashko and japanese so that's the um that's the blue i don't know what that one was called blue and green green blue gray i wonder why it was called that this this is green blue and gray id 9932 this is a lovely one this is it's called yellow brown and gray but it isn't yellow it's more of a mustard color it's a again because you've got the black thread running one way and all the colors the other way it makes the yellow a very mustard sort of french dijon mustard color that really sort of deep color but there's a lovely stripe, isn't it? Really strong stripe. Do you know, you don't have to use this for quilting or homewares. You can use it for dressmaking. Make a really lovely skirt, wouldn't it? Or one of those sort of wrap top kimono things, you know, maybe for wearing around the house or, um, you know, you can get those short kimonos. It would, it's very special, isn't it? So $9.99 for half a metre. But it is traditional woven in Japan, Japanese fabric. So let's just go through the other colours. There's NZ9959 and this one is called, I think it's Berry. What's this? Has this one got a name? The red, oh, it's nothing to do with berries at all. It's aubergines. It's red, aubergine and grey. Aubergine's a purple, really. That's lovely, isn't it? With a slight green stripe in it as well. But again, you know, that goes with any of the other um, fabrics. So use it for backing your shashko. Use it for putting his borders or sashes. If you want to make a sampler quilt using all the small coasters design, it's perfect for that. But as I said before, it's got the weight, so it's quite good for homewares too. Right, that's that one. Um, the next one is ZU9978. And this is slate, purple and grey. Slate, russet. Well, the russet is this sort of orangey tone. Yes. 
So you can see it's got these lovely aubergine stripe with the russet and the green. So let's just bring in my friend. Bring in my friend. Here we go. Okay, it's my friend. Oh, I'm not, it's not going to be my friend because this friend's a bit tall. I don't want really tall friends. I don't want tall friends or thin friends. So you can see how, you remember I said to you about the whole dressmaking thing. You know, how well it, it does drape really well. So if we made this into a nice, you could drape it round. It gives you just an idea of what it looks like when it's on a person. Now it looks like a Mexican poncho, to be fair. But it's lovely, isn't it? But you see how striking that is. Imagine making a bodice from that fabric. That's really lovely. But again, you know, it would look really nice if, if I pop it round the shoulders like a kimono. But it does drape. You know, you can see now I've put it on here, how well it will drape if you used it in dressmaking. But it does have just a little bit more substance than the normal quilting cotton. It certainly works well for quilting, but it will also, it just has that little bit more weight, which, which lends it to more structured dressmaking or homewares. I'm just going to move my friend back because she's taller than me, so I don't want to be her friend anymore. I wish I was taller. I've always wanted to be taller. I don't know. I'd like to be taller, though. I'd like to I'd like to be five foot five, that's what I'd like. I'm five foot one, which is quite you know I think five foot five would be good. But there we are. Right, the final one is N O ninety nine twenty-three. And oh I do like this one. So this is slate, blue, russet and grey. This is a really soft colour. Do you know this works very well with this panel that I unpacked and I still haven't put away. With this, um, I don't even know what colour it is, with the Air Force blue chashko pattern, doesn't it? So if we were going to border that, that looks really, really effective. So imagine you'd stitched all of this and you could stitch it all in the ecru thread or you could pick out some of the colours from here. So if you bought the um, the mix pack, the mix pack of these, some of the colours in here you could pick up. So this um, mustard that's in this pack is in this stripe, so you could stitch it in the mustard. It would look lovely in that. Or you could think, well, well I'm going to pick up the, um, the ready colour. That would look really effective. So there's so many things you can do. So if you have just half a metre of um, the stripe fabric and you pop that in your basket, then you can mix it together with any of the panels, and particularly the mixed colour pack. I mean, if you want to keep traditional, then buy the 100 metre skein of a crew. But if you want to add a little bit more colour, which, you know, they did do traditionally, are doing more so now in the more contemporary stitching, you know, you can really bring a bit of colour, but it's very, very simple to do, but incredibly effective. And if you pair the right packs and colours, so if you want the air this one, remember the code for that is AHVYH14, but they're all on the website, so just scroll down and you will see them all, you'll remember which ones I've done. Um, but those two go together particularly well. I'm just going to fold that one back up. Now, I have got some more Japanese fabrics, which you don't work Shashko on, but, oh, that's really bad, I'm going to have to do that again, that's annoying me. Oh, we've had an email from Christine. She loves, Christine loves Sashko. It's wonderful, isn't it, Christine? I think there's a lot of people who they start off going, oh, I know, well, that looks really tricky, a bit like me and the bias maker. And then you start doing it, and actually, this is really good. And it is very addictive because it grows quite quickly. Now, the wonderful thing, the wonderful thing about Sashko is um, the, you've got all these lovely Japanese fabrics which you, you can use to pair with it. So if you want to make a quilt and you want to add some binding or some sashing or you want to do a border, these are the traditional um, Japanese prints. And if I show you these two, these that's a slightly different one. These are printed on what I think of as bark cloth. Bark cloth, in fact, my um, pinafore is made from a pair of curtains. But this is actually bark cloth. 
So it's the, so it was really popular in like the sort of the 60s and 70s and it's got a real texture to it. So if you remember what the fabrics look like then, they have sort of a woven texture and these are like that bark cloth. So the three of these, all the same pattern but in three different colourways, um, I'll just read you one of the codes. This one is BSYH70. Now if, if I unfold this one so you can see, look at the background on it. But can you see... It has a slight weight, is weightier than normal quilted cotton. And if I turn it over and we can get a close up, can you, you can see, you don't see the weave as well on the front, but when you get to the back, if we get in really close, you can see the weave on it. So can you see here, see all those lines? That's the sort of the weave, that's what gives it that texture. Because if I flip it over, stay still. Um, <laughs> You can't see them as much on this side, but that they were in there. But now that we're nice and close up, can you see all these background patterns? These echo quite a lot of the Shashko patterns. So this is beautiful. It features the Koi Carp, the, the traditional um, Shashko wave pattern. And then this is one of the Shashko patterns inside it. So this is perfect if you want to use it to team with or pair with or back one of your shashko panels perfect but it works really well on its own if you want a little bit of japanese influence in your home um make a wonderful tote bag you know we're all supposed to use these re reusable shopping bags i would make this into a tote bag but it comes in three colors as well so there's this this one which because it's called umi and that's in umi and navy We've also got Umi, which is HQYH94. Is this one white or ivory? This one is white. Exactly the same print, but it's funny. When you start using a different background, the, um, the elements and the motifs show up quite differently. So now the background Shashko patterns jump out much more. But the fish look like they're really jumping across it. But this is a lovely fabric. So if you like the Japanese feel and the elements of it. This is a lovely fabric to buy. Because it has that weight, it is perfect for dressmaking too. You can make yourself a little jacket or a skirt. Um, I'd like, I actually I could make a pinafore in one of these. I actually quite like a pinafore. You can make lots of things with one of these. And then this one, this is the same Umi fabric and the code is OBYH82. And this is in black, again, when you get when you come into this one, you can see. Shall I put all three of them together? But look how it's got the same background, which is printed in grey. It's got the koi carp with which has got these sort of ochery gold type fins, and then there's the navy above it. But those three fabrics don't they go well together? Really lovely. Well, all all sorts of different uses. But remember, this does have that bark cloth weight to it, so it makes it a bit more useful. I've got one more fabric, which is made in the same cloth, but a different size. This is sort of waves. And this is, I really like this, this one, because it features the waves. It is not a metallic print on them, but it does look slightly metallic. It's printed in that kind of gold and ochre type colour which makes it look slightly metallic-y, but it's got these lovely waves throughout it in the different shades of grey and then whites and creams. But it's got that same weight as the others and it does pair well with it. So if I put it together, although it's not the same pattern, if I put it together with this one, you can see how they go together. You, they have the same colourways and the same balance. So ideal you know, you, if you bought half a metre of this fabric, you could make two cushions, use a different fabric for the back. And that's, you know, they look extremely expensive. But at 6 dollars 6 gosh, that is quite, that is very inexpensive, isn't it? Yeah, but for 6 99 that's enough for two cushions if you used a different fabric for the back. So I think that's very good value because this is good really good quality next one more we have one more fabric oh yes this is the f one that says fujisan now this is lovely fujisan is the japanese name that's what they call mount fuji 
So there is Mount Fuji. Can you see him? There's Mount Fuji. Ooh, there. And now this one really is metallic. So it's got a black background and it features the traditional Japanese crane and all the flowers and Mount Fuji, obviously. But all of this gold, like this flower here, and all of the outlining around all of these flowers and the cranes and everything, they are all printed in a lovely, really vibrant gold metallic. So they really show up. So if you want to add a little bit of Japanese touch to your... Um, just to your home, anywhere you want really, if you wanted to add it to a quilt, be perfect for fussy cutting, there's lots and lots of different elements here that you could use for EPP and that sort of thing, um, or even if you wanted, you know, you could cut out some of these and applique them onto things, but I know that Japanese fabrics, we've really tried hard to get as many as we can because they are incredibly popular, all things Japanese are really good, but I, I think this is, it's, you can't really see, you have to, I wonder if I, ca if I drape it a little bit, whether you catch the light, but it really does have a lovely metallic element to it. I'm just going to open it out. But you can really see, now I've, yes, when you drape it a bit more, you can see the metallic shine. I've actually got that upside down. One moment. There we go. Mountains are upside down. And the top of the mountain is all gilded, like it's been sprayed in gold. That's lovely, isn't it? Really nice. £7.49 for half a metre. But that is very good quality fabric. So, that. I hope you enjoyed Shashko and you've been inspired to have a go. Honestly, if re-watch re Susan's show. She'll explain it all to you. I've... I'm totally hooked by it now. Um, but come back after the break. We've got Cara on at 11 o'clock. Look at him. He comes from a book that we haven't featured for because, called 50 Fabric Animals. And it features low, well, 50 patterns from one of my favourite magazines. And we've got two, three gorgeous bundles. No, four. Four gorgeous bundles to create more bears with so um if you pop back in just a few minutes time we'll have cara and she's going to show us how to make the bear and we'll have a look at the bundles and the books so we'll see you in just a few minutes if you love sewing then you need the uk's favorite sewing magazine every month you'll receive exclusive patterns Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page.
Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95 no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre which is 0800 001 4433. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits. Feeling good. It's about looking great. Making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace the Queen's Garden Party for some work that I did with Marie Curie I was so so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time and um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you so see you again soon bye bye And welcome back. We have now got Bear Hour. Bear Hour. Bear with us. Bear with. We're going to say it Bear with all the time because we've got Bear Hour. Now, the bear, should we have a look at him? Isn't he gorgeous? Brand new, brand new. Not ever, 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 ever had him before. So he comes from this book, Fabri. 50 fabric animals he's really soft so he's made in a really lovely weight linen kind of a duck egg blue sort of color but it's very soft it's not like your scratchy linen it's very soft and he's got checks he's got like one checked ear and one non-checked ear and he's got check paws and a bow around his neck and eyes and a little bit of embroidery and i like this feature on him he's got proper button arms so he's what are they called? Posable. Look, so you can stand him up. I don't know whether he'd stay. I suppose he would if you wedged him against something. Whee! <laughs> Put your hands in the air. Whee! <laughs> Whee! So he comes in this lovely fabric, 50 fabric animal book. And now I'm quite excited by this because it features 50 designs from the magazine Marie Claire Ide. Now this is my favourite magazine. So it's a French magazine produced by Marie Claire and but Marie Claire Ide features the most beautiful craft projects, all different sorts of crafts from soft toys to um, candle making and paper making and um, knitting, everything. But it is beautiful, it's beautifully shot, it's just classy just like the French do. So whenever I used to go on holiday to France I'd always buy myself a copy. It comes out every two months. I got a subscription for a couple of years, but it was really expensive because it was coming over from France. So I was really excited that they've taken the best toys featured in Marie Claire Ed Ide over the years and 
it's got all the toys from it and it's just it's just his french i mean it's not in french it's in english thankfully otherwise we wouldn't be able to understand it but the photography and the styling is very just classy just classy so all the patterns and all the designs and everything you need are in here some of them i think most of them need to be enlarged to make them big enough or you could just make a little version i mean look at this one the tartan handkerchief rabbit so to make this bear you need the book because obviously the pattern's in the book and then you need a fabric pad but the book is 12.99 and it has got 50 animals in it so all these different bears i mean look at those two mr and mrs bear they're just beautiful aren't they Aren't they really lovely? And like with these, it's not just the bear patterns that are in here, but all the colours in there, all the clothes as well. So that it's um 26 pence per animal, per animal. But it's got all sorts of different things. So you've got like seagulls. It's not just um, it's not just stuff. It's not just toys. It's animals, but not toys. So you've got a seagull quilt. Um, and butterflies so there's a plique section a white mouse that's the natural fabrics section there's ghosts i'm not sure ghosts is a fabric animal just saying or less oh well actually maybe they're the they're the ghosts of animals and that's why they're white yes maybe they're, that's true actually they could be ghosts of animals look at the little cloth dogs aren't they sweet that one's got like a little knitted um, jumper and trousers these are lovely I mean these are they're very unusual they're not the sort of thing I this is definitely one of my favorites the patchwork cow they are um, it's very west country isn't it can't be a bit of west country to be honest I've never seen one of these in Somerset to be fair but it is lovely isn't it but it is it just has that real um, just unusual so it's, it's like going to a french brocante those kind of little second hand um antique shops beautiful fabrics so this is the t this is the one that we're going to be made well we're we when i say we the royal. i mean cara <laughs> well while i chat to her is the linen teddy so we have got it in a, in a choice so of kits so this one here this is the aqua linen bear so let me show you what you get in the kit well the fabric pack for this you get um it's 12.99 that's really good value so and ch chatting to cara cara earlier got those words mixed together you um, there's enough fabric here to make two bears so you get half a meter of the linen fabric and half a meter of the navy gingham fabric and you get a skein of stranded cotton and you get a whole bag of soft toy filling so you get and you can make two bears so with this one Kara has done him so that he's all in the linen with his accents in the gingham so the other bear you could swap round if you wanted to but there is enough to make two of the bears so you've got this soft toy filling, a metre of fabric, which is half a metre of the um, aqua linen. And it is a really nice weight because we've got it in some of the others. I am going to show you what it look, what it feels like. It drapes really well. Do we sell this by the half metre? Because this is really nice. It's got a really nice drape. It'd be lovely for dressmaking. Actually, I'd like this in pillowcases. It'd be ever so soft. It feels quite French, actually. It's got that sort of look to it. But that's a lovely weighted fabric. Make a really nice summer jacket. Just saying. As well as a teddy. And then the um, gingham is not your printed gingham. It's your woven gingham. So you can. T there's a very big difference. So for twelve ninety nine, you get a metre of fabric, a the stranded cotton and the filling that is very very good value and it is your proper gingham it's your yarn you know it's your woven gingham it's not printed so it's the same on both sides and it's 100 percent cotton so that's a really lovely bundle that is a great price just gonna right so the next one i'm going to show you this lovely if you fancy a, do you fancy a red bear so this one is actually called cream i really like this one what a good choice i love 
the calico, so the main fabric is the calico, and then you've got the red gingham. They go, they go very well together. They are, um, it's very French actually, isn't it? Do you think it's a bit French, Carl? Really? That kind of, oh, this is the one that um, producer Paul chose personally because <laughs> he wanted to have a, a calico and a red bear. Well, it's a really good choice. Well done, Paul. Well done. I mean, obviously, there's no competition as to which one sells best, obviously. <laughs> Jess did help him, but not there's a competition. So you get a half a metre of the calico, half a metre of the red gingham, the skein of brown stranded cotton and the soft toy filling. So that's the red bear. This one is, I don't know what this one is called. Is it pale blue? But with this bear, and now this is called... No, this which I this can't be called denim. That's the other one. This one is this. Right, this one is the cream one. So this is exactly the same linen that's featured in the Aqua Bear, and this is the one that Cara's going to be making for us. Just so you know, so it features a cream, but more I would say it's more of a taupe than a cream. It's a bit like um a dirtier cream, isn't Natural. it? Natural natural cream with again a woven lovely pale blue gingham they go really well together and then you've got the gain of stranded cotton which is used for his claws and his nose and his mouth and the soft toy filling and then the final bear bear number four <laughs> bear with bear with how many bear jokes can we make is the denim one and that's again that's lovely linen fabric but in a really lovely sort of mid blue denim color but it is a lovely fabric then you've got for the accent fabric this is really nice it's just a very small twining viney pattern that just serves as a, a contrast with a little bit of print in it can you see it if we get up nice and close that's lovely isn't it I think a denim bear would be lovely. Remember, in these um, kits, there's enough to make two. Don't forget that. And the brown skein of scrounger cotton and the soft toy filling. Um, we've also got noses. Noses. We've got the no. Well, they're not noses. They're buttons. Actually, no, they're not. No, they're eyes. I said they're noses, but they're the eyes that are used on these. <laughs> but they could be noses. They could be noses, but they're eyes. So you, if you want to buy a pack of these, um, domed black buttons, pack of 50. You can make loads of nose eyes. £5.49 if you want those. Um, and one last thing before we go across to Cara is these would make fantastic door stops. So if you want to make a door stop, if you bought a bag of these, you would probably be enough for four because you wouldn't fill the whole thing with it. But you'd definitely be enough for two. Um, you could put them into a little fabric bag first and put them inside just just the bottom, just the body section. And wouldn't they make a lovely doorstop? So if you want these um, recycled polythene pellets for a kilo, five ninety nine, or for any other doorstops, you could use them for too. So very quick warning to you. Over half of the stock of the book has already gone. Now you need the book to be able to make it. So what I would say is pop it in your basket and check it out because there's more there's, people have put things in baskets and check them out. That means that you can then sit back and watch Cara make it without worrying that you're not going to get the book. But over half of the stock has already gone and we haven't started the demonstration. OK, so Cara. Hello. Again. Hello. Back again. Hello again. Isn't he, she gorgeous? Absolutely yes, is gorgeous. she a he or a she? I'm not sure really. It's, it's so strange. I've done a few um, animals, soft toys before mm. and you know, you start assembling the pieces yeah, and then they start to get their character mm. once you sort of add the features and um, I actually had him, I'm going to say him, mm. um, sat on my desk with his head and his ears and his eyes and his nose mm. and everything, but no arms or legs. And it, he just sat there and I just thought, oh, no, I need to get him finished. Yeah, he looked he a bit sad. Then when he was finished, he's just gorgeous. Well, he's Absolutely a really gorgeous. sort of traditional teddy, I yeah. think, because he's got the jointed legs. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the, the fabric, and he's got really big arms. He has he? got big arms, but big arms to hug. Yeah, but I know. think that sort of that gives him that really sort yeah. of traditional like nursery look, doesn't yes. he? he? Feels like he should yes. be on a shelf somewhere. Definitely, but. definitely, and not just for children because obviously, um, what we've used, we've used some buttons for the eyes and buttons to attach the arms and everything. Yes. So if it's for a young child, then I would suggest using felt. For the eyes mm. and then just stitching the arms yes, on without yeah. the buttons you could just sew all the way through couldn't you, you would just, yeah you would and you know you could even put a little bit of felt on the outside so that you can't see your stitching yeah well, that's and because true. what the beauty of him is actually because he is it like it's like mm. he's jointed um you know which is really good so um, as I say, for a young child, don't use the buttons. Yes, yeah. um, but he would all. make a great doorstop as well, wouldn't he? A fantastic doorstop. And as you say, people love, I mean, he, mm. he's a, a sophisticated bear, so it's not just for children. It's no, for no, no, he really well. is. Well, that's why I think the book is, you can tell it's French. Yes. For yeah. class, isn't it? Yeah, very, very good. So where do we start? <gasps> start at the beginning. <laughs> 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 Choose your project from the book. And obviously, um, you know, with all the sets and everything, you could use that fabric for lots and lots of these projects. Oh, so if you made one bay, you could make another toy in uh, the book. Use the fabric mm. for something else. So, um, you know, the other thing is, um, you quite rightly said, I was able to cut two out of the fabric that I was given because the fabric's very wide so oh, okay. um, that's the reason and in fact I um, was able to cut two out of having the plain main body mm. and everything and then the paws in the check but if you wanted to swap it round there's enough fabric. Oh you wow know, which definitely. is brilliant isn't it? So, so um, select your project and once you've selected your project um, I always suggest to people that it's always a good idea to actually read through the instructions <laughs> before you start. I know. We, we, we're, um, I think we're rubbish at that as crafters, oh, aren't we? Oh, it's terrible. You think, oh, I, I can do it. Yeah, no, I, can't. I can do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. But it's not that. So you just so want to get on? You do. You want to get on. You want to get started. But um, for this particular one, they've said it's a linen teddy. And um, in their instructions, they said, oh, dye your linen. Well, obviously... We've, We've dyed it for the you. Dyed, the, the dyed linen, so you won't need to do that. Um, but if you did have some plain linen and you mm. wanted to actually, um, you know, dye your own linen, it does give some information on mm. that. Okay. Um, and then just read it through generally. Um, it goes through all the different um, sections. It, it suggests a quarter of an inch seam allowance, um, you know, which is good. Um, tells you about the body, the arms, legs, all of it. But that's the whole instructions. So, you know, there's not a massive amount oh, okay. of instructions to go through. So I think um, it's not necessarily for a complete beginner. Right. But for somebody who's confident with their stitching, oh, I think okay. that's the okay. thing. Because, you know, you're you're having a pattern. If you've done dressmaking, of course, you know, you can do that. If you've done quilting mm. or patchwork or anything like that, you can actually progress on to doing this type of thing. Um, the next page is the actual templates. So... Um, this is suggested they go through the different um, templates at the beginning of the book and they do it, it explain about enlarging the pattern oh okay so it which explains is good that to you yeah. how you need to do it. i suppose that they wouldn't get 50 in there if they put the templates no on the size, that's the they? whole thing you can either um you know forego 50 mm. projects and have maybe 10 15 projects yeah. and then full size patterns or you can have 50 mm. patterns and then you do yes, need true. to um so if i just show you here you have a line there within the book and it does say 10 centimeters or four inches and when you measure this it actually measures two inches so right. that tells you that you know you need to double so it up. So also it means when you photocopy, you know if you've done it right. Yes. If you've done it enough. But I, could, yes. I guess you could use them as they are to make a mini one. You can make a mini one. You can make, you know, 150%. Yeah, you can make a, you. a massive. Some of the projects in here is huge bears. Is the seam allowance added on after? Afterwards. Oh, well, that's brilliant yeah. then. So you yeah. could enlarge them or reduce yeah. them or do whatever yeah. and then add the seam allowance on. Because if the right. seam allowance is already in, you'd have to take that off and that would be complicated. Yes. But you could make... Mummy, this could be baby. Yes. Or yes. no, you can make a smaller one. Yeah. This could be the middle one, and then you could make a, a bigger one. Yeah. Oh, how lovely really would good. that be? Yeah. So the first thing is, is obviously to um, sort about in, uh, enlarging that. Um, the sole is in yellow. And you might think, why is the sole in yellow? 
And the reason why the soul is in yellow is because that's not enlarged. Oh, okay. That is the actual size. Right. They do say add a generous seam allowance to the top of the foot and adjust to fit. Well, I found when I was stitching it that actually that was fine. Oh, Just okay. as it was, All it right, was that fine. Was a good tip. And when I look at the bear, you can see that the um, the feet are lovely size. Yeah, no, they fit. You could embroider their name on as well. Oh, definitely. That'd be nice. And a date and yes, stuff like that. Lovely for yeah. a baby. Yeah. But so, um, do that before you make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. So enlarge your pattern. And um, this is one that I was able to get enlarged by a, a very kind neighbour who oh. had um, a machine that was able to print out onto card, which was even better. Wow. So, um, you know, just get all your pattern pieces. I did two of the, I'll put that one up, two of the sole of the foot. So just get all your pattern pieces. There are um, lines on the patterns showing the straight grain of the fabric. Oh, that's really handy. Um, especially when you've got a fabric like those linens, they do tend to stretch. Well, it does have a, well, it has a weave in it, a very yes. horizontal and vertical one. Yep. So although it doesn't have like a pattern, it does have a weave. It's lovely, this linen fabric. Was it, it nice to sew with? It was lovely. Was and it? what's nice is um, with sort of any toy making or anything like that, it's quite nice to have a fabric that has a bit of give to it. So yeah. when you're actually... Yeah. Um, stuffing it and you know putting the stuffing in you can mold it sort of a little okay. bit more because of that so um, you've got all your pattern pieces you check the straight grain um, you can you know so you can have your check for the actual heel and for the palm and then what I love about that one is there's one of the ears has got the check on the I inside. know I think that's really lovely isn't it so you know you. So could you could do them both like that. Yes, but I think could. there's something a bit quirky about yes. that. when it's almost like like a patchwork bear that was just yes. a bit left over. But yeah. you could use another fabric from your own stash, couldn't yeah, you, if you wanted definitely. a different. So add um, some extra bits. In. As I say, if you did want to get two out of the actual linen type fabric, just take your time and lay them out right. properly. And bear in mind that you need to add the quarter of an inch seam yeah. allowance. Yeah. So you know when you're laying it on your fabric, don't think that you can go like that. Um, you know, because you need to allow the quarter of an inch. Right. So you need to have a bit of space around it. I mm. used a friction pen again, um, or, you know, any mark fabric mm. pen um, to mark the fabric. Um, you've also got the information about um, leaving gaps for filling um, on the arm, on the body, and things like that. So all of that sort of information needs to be transferred onto the fabric. Um, also, the shape of the bear, you can see he's got a lovely tummy. Yeah, no, he has got a really nice right. Look at him. So, um, you know, the curve <laughs> on him, the... I'll show him on the side. Look at that tummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, look at that tummy. Yes, he has got a lovely so shape. So you've got a, a more pronounced mm. curve for the front. So that's the other important thing is to remember which is your centre front and which is the side. Um, and as I say, you've got um, space for filling and everything so that's the important thing um, you can trace that all onto your fabric and then you can get stitching um, it also tells you how many of each item that you need to do and if it says a pair then you know that you need to either have your fabric right sides together right okay. and cut two or if you've got a single layer of fabric remember to turn yes okay yes very important um, otherwise you'll find that you've got two left arms and <laughs> two, two right arms and everything. yes that's true okay? actually yes so again you know that's important to know um, if you have got a fabric that's got a front and a back okay yeah so we've so we've got our pattern pieces and we've cut them out of the fabric um, I'll just pop this down so you can see all the pieces. You can see how soft this is, which is really, really nice. Mm. Oh, I like that colourway. Yes. It's pretty. It's, isn't it's like it? a natural linen is, colour, yeah. isn't it? It's, so it's pretty. Very soft, isn't it? Yes. It's got sort of like a, a weave to it. I don't mm. know whether the camera will be able to pick up on it, but there is quite a weave to it, which is nice. Yeah, if so it gives it texture. Yeah, let's get a close up. Can you see the weave? Yes, yeah, you can. It's nice. It's lovely, isn't it? Because it's got like the. 
It's got the vertical and the horizontal sort of weave lines in it, but it's lovely linen. So you've cut stonewashed linen. Mm. Mm, nice. You've cut all your pieces and then you'll start following the instructions within the book of putting the actual item together. So um, the first thing is to actually um, stitch the body. So I would um, just move everything else out of the way and then stitch your body. So we've got the back of the bear. So we're going to stitch from the point there all the way to the gap and then from the point there all the way. Now this, in fact, is um, the back of the bear and then you'll find that you will actually, he, he's got a bit of a shape to the back, but the reason for that is that when you do the head and you attach the head to the body, I'll show you in a mm. minute, um, you need that extra space. You don't want it to be flat or to a point. Oh, okay. So you want that extra sort of structure so that the head is um, stitched nicely onto the body. And then the other one, this is the other part. So we will stitch down the centre front. So the side pieces are unstitched. So okay. um, I can take you to the machine. I have got some items that I've prepared earlier because yes. I thought you didn't want to just see me stitching all the... Yeah, um, okay. But the other thing that I did as well, because it is um, quite a soft woven fabric and there is quite a give to it, um, is I actually stitch it with a finer s stitch length. So okay. I actually took mine down to a toe. Oh, right. Um, okay. Just, just from the point yes. of view that if you use a longer stitch length, and when you turn it round, mm. if you've got longer stitches, you might be able to see the stitches. It's not like you've got fur fabric or something like that yes, to I see what you mean. You know, yeah. overtake it. So, yeah, you might be able to see them through. Yeah, and actually, you no, know, this is lovely. So we're just... Good tip. Because it's only when you've tried it you know this, yes. isn't it? Yes. Um, you know, I've done quite a few um, toys now, and actually I've found that if it's a, a cotton fabric or something like this, you reduce your stitch length and it's just much nicer. You get a much nicer seam to it, oh, really. OK, so because of it being stuffed. Yes. So we'll just pop the needle down. Um, try and choose a thread that um, you know, matches your fabric again for the same sort of reasons, because when you are um, stuffing, you don't want the um, thread to sort of stand out. So if you've got um, you know, a white or something like that, that could stand mm. out. So um, w as we're stitching and we're with a short length, um, move your pins as you're stitching and you can lift your foot up and move your fabric and just try and stitch on the line. You can see I've cut round the, um, cut, drawn round the shapes, so that the cardboard shapes, and then added my um, seam allowance. So just make sure that oh, you're Oh, so edges. you could just sew along the seam allowance, the drawn line. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. It's actually just drawing But did there. you then cut them accurately quarter of an inch outside? Um, no, roughly. Oh, okay. Because you're going to trim it down after. Right. As long so as you've drawn around the card. Oh, okay. And the, the shape of the actual. Yes. And you sew there. along that line. You sew along that line. So that's really good because it's it does take quite a while to add an accurate seam allowance, yes. especially to shape things. But if you draw along it yeah. and then cut roughly, that's a brilliant idea. No, it's it's really good actually. Um, you know, because I know sometimes, especially with a fabric that does move a little bit, yeah. um, it's harder to sort of get that. Mm. Um, I've done a reverse stitch just there as well. So that's the, the if you're interested in buying the sewing machine, we've got the Elmer 550, which is at um, 499 and we've got that on the three split play option. So you can pay £166.33 a month, but it means you can split it over the three months, um, which is a lot better as if you want to invest in a decent machine. And these are really good quality, lovely, easy to use machines because we've now got the split pay option, uh, just £166 for this month, you'll have finished paying for it by Christmas. But um, if you've got any questions about our split pay, do phone the call centre on 0800 001 Um It's run by Gemporia, who's a UK-based call centre who own us, and they've done split pay for years, so they'll know all the answers to all your questions if you have want to understand how it works. And they're really nice. They're a very friendly bunch of people. Very helpful. 
So what I've done here is I'm stitching the back of the bear. Mm. So I'm leaving a gap and that's the gap for turning. Right, okay. So um, I've just done a reverse stitch there so that it's nice and secure and it keeps the fabrics together. Mm -hmm. And then again, I'm coming up. So this is the back of the bear where we said about the curve. Oh yeah. So uh, I'll do reverse stitch at the beginning because when you're actually going to be stuffing this, you don't want your stitches to undo. Oh, that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't stop. <laughs> so I'm just going around the corner, just lifting the foot slightly to get me around the corner. If you do your needle down in your machine, it should stay down and okay. allow you to lift the foot up and just do a couple of stitches to go around the curve. And then reverse again. Okay. So we've done the front of the bear, which is mm. a lovely sort of curve there. Um, you can press it, but there's no need really, because when you come to stuff it, that's when the actual seam oh, will be Oh, I guess it'll just open. push the yeah. seam allowance open yeah. all on its own then. Yeah. And then you do the same. This is the back of the bear. And then right sides together, match your seams at the bottom and um, you can trim this with pinking shears or you can leave it as it is mm -hmm. because it's going to be on the inside of the bear. It's not going to get any extra wear and tear. And then you can nest the seams, but try and make sure that you actually match the seams um, there at the bottom. And then again, this is the lovely thing about this fabric is that you'll be just moving it round like that. Pop a couple of pins in just to hold it. And just follow the shape until you get to the top. When you get to the top, don't worry too much about your seams and everything meeting. Because okay. it's the top of the bear, you're going to be, um, you know, obviously try and make sure that there's not a massive hole. Um, but don't worry too much because that's going to be covered by the head of the bear. Okay. So. Um, oh, so it is. There isn't a hole left in the top. No, then. no, there's not a hole. But if the hole was, is in the bottom of the head that sits on top of it. Yes. Yeah. Because you've got okay. um, the actual. Move my pins over there. It might be easier. Um, because you've got your actual um, the gap at the back for putting the stuffing in then um, you know you don't need any other holes for turning through or anything. So we're just matching that all the way around. Okay, we've got a bit of a, a stock warning. Where are we with stock on this? Yes, so the book, 50 fabric, we have got less than 10. So if you really want to make the bear, I would suggest you put it in your basket and check out. If it's in your basket and you haven't checked out, you can't guarantee it's yours. So um, I would do that, otherwise you won't be able to make the bear. No, but, no, mm. and that would be awful. Yeah. And, and there's all those lovely projects as well. I know there as well. Yeah. Also in the fabric bundles at the Aqua, which is the bear that we've made up, which is this one. And and there are own, there's less than 10 in oh there gosh. of that one. So if you do want that one, put it in your basket and check out. Remember, you can check out as many times as you want today and for only the one PMP of 395. But if you've got the book or the aqua bundle in your basket, then please check it out. Otherwise, go. Right. Okay. Back to you. Sorry. So um, I want to try and get on to some of the more assembled bits. Okay. So I'm not going to be spending a massive amount of time. I hope that's okay. Um, no, 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 it's stitching nice on to the machine. See the trickier bits, yeah. Really. So um, you will machine all the way round, but like I say, at the top, don't worry too much if you've got a little bit of a hole at the top there. But you will go round and stitch all of that. And um, if you want to, you can pink it and then turn it through. Okay. And then, as if by magic, <gasps> that's amazing. <laughs> it looks like a tailor's ham. It does, doesn't it? So this is the top, and do you remember I said about don't worry yeah. too much? That's fine. That's going to that's be actually covered, covered with the head. And you've got, this is the shoulders of the bear. Of this course. is his lovely yeah. front bit. And this is the back of the bear. And you want it, when I do um, toy making, I tend to actually overstuff 
my um, items mm. because I feel that they need to have, you know, quite a bit of stuffing. Yes. But with this one, you don't. You okay, don't need so to. You want it nice and soft because your arms are going to be stitched either side oh, of there. Of course. Yes. And your legs are going to be stitched either side of there. So that's the reason why you don't overstuff it. But you still want to make sure that you've got a lovely yeah, shape and yeah. everything. And that stuffing is just the best. It really is. Oh, the one it's that we just, sell in the kit. Yeah, it's just so, so soft. Super soft. That's because it's called super soft. No, it's it is really nice. I use, I lovely. always use that. Yeah. But I still always pull it apart, though. Yes, I do. So and just... and start with just a little bit. You don't want any lumps and bumps mm. within the actual um, body or any of the items there. So you will just pull it apart slightly and then just pop it in. And when you're pulling it apart like that, you're actually giving it a little bit more air in it. It's right. like making a cake, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I guess because it just gets sort of compressed a bit in transit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, so. yeah. So as I say, the, the stuffing is gorgeous. Mm. Um, you will be left with your seam here. And you can see the fabric does fray a little bit. Okay. But don't worry about that. Um, I think I've got a needle threaded. Um, you want some matching thread if you can and then you won't be able to see this at all but mm -hmm. tie a knot, have a double thread and um, just a normal sewing needle. So tie a knot in there and you actually lose the knot inside the bear because it is quite loosely woven I'm going to do just another little stitch there just to hold that in securely. Mm -hmm. Now what I am going to do, and I hope you'll be able to see this on the overhead camera, is we're going to do ladder stitch. And I love ladder stitch. Okay, yes, so show us. Can you get in nice and close? Oh yes, he's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming, he's coming like in. to land. To move it? Lovely. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> up a yeah. bit, down a bit, right, right, right a bit. Down, down okay, a bit. can we see that? Okay. Yes. Right, so you ladder stitch. I've lost my knot within the um, Ooh, even better. body of the actual yeah. bear. And you'll do a little stitch on the front, parallel to the seam, and then a little stitch below that. And then another little stitch above. And you'll think, oh gosh, the stitches are showing. But you do this a few times. Put your um, finger within the opening. And can you see those stitches there? Mm -hmm. When you pull those together, the way that you've done it, it just closes oh, it completely. Lovely, really so neat. it makes a lovely, neat finish. Mm. Um, it's sort of like an invisible. And it just takes practice. Um, you want to make sure that your seam allowance of the fabric is tucked under and within the body of the actual bear, the bear's body. Yeah. And then you just carry on. You'll take a little bit longer than I'm taking at the moment. Do little stitches like that. But as again, you can see the stitches there. When you pull it together, you can't see them. And it is like a ladder because it's just parallel stitches. That's why it's called ladder stitch. Okay. And you'll do that for all the openings. So for the arms, for the legs. Um, the only one that you won't do it for is actually the um, head. And I'll show you what I've done for the top of the head. So I'll just finish that so we get rid of that. And then I want to go on to showing you how to do the arm with the pad and then the leg with the um, sole. And then hopefully, if there's enough time, I'll show you how to do the ears as well. Well, we've got about 20 minutes left. Excellent. So that'll fly Maximum. by, won't it? Maximum. Maximum. I'm not allowed to go yes. over. No, no, we don't get he's allowed gonna, to go over. He's going to put uh, the timer on me, is he? Mm. Right, so I've done my seam there. And as I say, I would take a little bit more time than that, mm. but it's still not bad. Um, when I come to the end, I'll still do another little stitch there. And then I'm going to actually pass my needle along the seam. So you can see that's quite a long length. And I'm just going to do a little stitch back. 
and then to secure it and then another little stitch back and I do about three or four of those and it just means that that thread hopefully will not come yeah. undone well, okay. it's important, isn't it, particularly if it's a toy that you... Yes, you, know, you don't want the stuffing... Oh, things. my gosh, no, you don't want the stuffing to come out. So there's the back of your um, bear. We've got um, the top there and the base there. OK? Right. Um, maybe do head next. So I have got one I've made earlier. Oh, OK. OK. So to do this... You have the shape of your bear like that and you have a mark on the the gusset that you have for the front. Mm. Um, I don't think you'll be able to show it like that. So we have um, the gusset going down the centre of the head, so the head panel there. And what you'll do is once you've marked that centre is you'll be stitching so again, with the quarter, quarter of an inch seam allowance, you want that mark, that halfway mark, to match the corner of the nose there. So you've got the nose going that way and that way. And remember your seam allowance underneath, so that halfway mark needs to really match that. Now again, it's worth taking your time. So I would pop a couple of pins in to hold that in position before you get started. Match your raw edges together. Mm -hmm. You've still got your mark where you um, drew round the card. And you can do, you could pin the whole thing if you find it easier. It's entirely up to so you. So you need to put plenty of pins in there yes. to ease it. Yeah. To ease it round. Mm -hmm. And again, because of the weave of the fabric, it eases round beautifully and you'll oh, be able course, to... Yeah, yeah. you've got give in it, haven't Yes. You? So what we'll be doing is stitching from the nose all the way around the head. And then once you've done that, I would do um, a locking stitch right mm. on that seam there. So I'd actually do the locking stitch there. And then you'll match the gusset again from there backwards. So again, pop your pins in to make sure that's nice and secure. Okay? Is that all right? Or do you want me to actually No, no, that's lovely. No, that's that makes fine. absolute perfect sense. Okay. No, I think it's a good idea to spend time thinking about the pinning and easing it round yes. so you don't get to the end and go, oh, God, start again. Yes. Because you don't really yep. want to unpick it. So once you've done that, um, you'll then um, be end up with this sort of shape and mm. that's the reason why you've done it from the center backwards center oh, backwards okay. so you don't pull your fabric out of shape right and all the way down really even yeah round, isn't and it? all the way down to the back you'll be left with the um head sort of open here and you'll put the stuffing in now the head is the one that i did put quite a bit of stuffing in and um, but still it's still nice and the reason why I put quite a bit of stuffing is because I wanted to make sure that I had this shape. Yes, that's quite important. Yes. So yeah. there's only four books left now. So please, if it's in your basket, do check it out. Because And the aqua bundle is the same. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, so this is where you would put your um, eyes. Okay. So those lovely eyes, the domed ones. So if, if this is for an adult or for an older child, then you can get away with the buttons. But you'll mm. know the child that you're going to give this to. So you'll know whether you, you will yes, feel safe. Yes, sure. But please don't use them if it is for a younger child. And you'll be stitching your eyes either side of the nose there. And um, those sash coat needles would be quite good for that. You oh, know that okay. you had earlier. Yes, because they're um, a bit longer. Because they are quite a bit longer. I don't know if I've got one in here. Yes, that's true. So, you know, you've got quite a long needle there. That's a sashko needle, and that will actually go through. Oh, so you go from one eye to the next? Go from one eye to the next. Oh, okay. So you're going from one eye to the next, like that. Mm. And if you pull that, it actually makes a bit more of a shape oh, of the nose well, and everything. So, so that's what you'll do for adding the um, eyes. If there's time, I can show you that mm. actually yeah, in no, reality. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
And, then, and I guess if you haven't got a long needle, you just have to sort of squash it. You do. And that, again, that's the reason mm. why. I mean, if I take the needle the out... The Sashko needles, they're £3.49 for a pack of three. So if you do do toy making and you need it slightly longer... Yeah, I think they are gold tips, aren't they? Yes, yeah. yeah. Gold eyes. So if you need... Yeah. Um, you know, if you want slightly longer ones for three forty nine, just pop them in your basket. Worth if it. you don't have long needles, mm. that's again. Can you see that you can actually squash it yes. quite a bit? Yeah. Okay. It'd be just easy if you did. Yeah. <laughs> or you just do one eye at a time. True. True. You yes, know, you that's the do. only thing. Yeah. Right. For the nose, I actually used um, like an air air marker. You know, one that oh, disappears. Yes. yes. And I drew the nose shape so pop it there and there. So I actually drew the nose shape onto the bear. Um, I think I've only got a friction pen somewhere. Cunningly concealed, no, it's gone. Oh, okay, <laughs> don't worry, it's gone walkabout. You. Um, so you'll just mark the shape of the mm. nose there and you can see, you can play around with this. I used um, six strands of stranded cotton. Right. Um, stripped the thread first, so all the um, threads were lying nice and parallel. And then you'll do a little stitch down there mm -hmm. under the nose, and then one little long stitch one side, and one little long stitch the other. And you can make him um, smile or anything like that. Thank you very much. But you could use the air er the um, yes. erasable, but use a hairdryer. Yes. Yes, you can use this. So just get an idea. <laughs> I suppose you could follow the... Um, oh, yep. Is there a nice picture that you could, if you want to follow it, how to do his nose? Yes, um, there's not a close-up picture. It's just the picture on the actual um, photograph. Yeah. But I d this is how I did mine. I don't know if you can see that. So I had a line like that and then a line coming down. Yeah, no, we can see him. Underneath. And then you've got a line on the seam and then a line either side. And if it is something, as you say, if it's a friction pen and you get your hairdryer out, you'll get rid of that marking. Um, but use, you know, if you're not comfortable with using six strands, then use three strands and do your satin stitch over. And if there are any gaps, you can just go over that again. Try not pull that too tight because you don't want the nose to get distorted. Okay. So the next one... Yeah, actually, the photo in the book is quite... Because it's taken from above, you can see his nose quite well. Yes. Sort of cut to copy, can't yeah. you? So the next one, I suppose, will be the ears. So let's just pop the bear. Oh, has anybody got a name for the bear? <laughs> Good uh, Barney. Barney the bear. No, he's a French bear. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice. <laughs> Claude. Claude. Claude yeah. bear. Okay. Jean-Claude. <laughs> okay, so the ears would be the next one. So um, with the ears, you're going to actually draw the shape of the ear, have your quarter of an inch, and you're going to stitch along that edge, leave the bottom edge open. Or you just open. need to move his, your body out of the way. My <laughs> body? <you're> <laughs> 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 that was going to be hard. I was thinking my stomach wasn't... <laughs> yes, could you move your body out of the way? Please just leave your hands in shot. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Maybe teddy body, because he's um, hiding. <laughs> he's he's hiding. hiding. Hiding your ears. That's better. <laughs> there keep we your go. body where it is. I'll keep my body, body. where my body is. Um, I'll keep his head right. where his head is. So um, you're going to stitch all the way round and leave the bottom seam open. Oh, this stitch is where you can choose round. how many yes. ears have other colours. or Yeah. So, um, you know, I've got one of the natural linen and yes, one of the lovely. checks. Um, so you would do two of those and then you would tuck. Just seeing, I thought I've got another ear. I've lost an ear. Oh, no, I haven't. Here we go. Found the one ear. Somewhere. Found it, found it. Here it is. So once you've done that, <laughs> you terrible. will tuck in the raw edges. So right. you'll tuck in your raw edges and then go along that seam again with your ladder stitch. So mm. tucking the raw edges in. You know, you can just do an over over stitch or you can do the um Yes, just do a bit it like neater that. with the ladder, yeah. isn't it? So again, let's just trim this ear. 
so you can see actually the, sh the size of the ear is quite different once you've tucked that in. I found this was much easier in the actual instructions. They suggest that you tuck this in and attach it to the head um, before you actually sew it together. And I just found it much easier to tuck this in, sew those raw yeah, edges together and then yeah, attach Yeah, because it. the ears aren't being sold sewn on as open ears anyway no, are they so no. it does i mean because sometimes you see toys where they they go on open or you yes. get pieces but because they're sewn on closed now that's much yeah simpler and then you want to place your ears either side of the head and i found again i found this easier to just do it visually and you want that sort of curve i don't know if you can see that yes yes okay so you want that sort of curve. So I actually popped a couple of pins in to hold it in position. Right. So we've and got five, then, five, just over five minutes left. Yeah, that's fine. I want to try and get on to some of the other. So you pop your ear on like that, ear on, mm. <laughs> on like that, and then very carefully pass your needle through the head and through the seam of the ear, through the head, through the seam of the ear. Try and make tiny, tiny stitches, mm. not big stitches, um, but try and keep that shape and everything. And you'll do exactly the same with the He's other ear. He's lovely in the, the cream. Side. Now you've put his ears on. I know. It's all really coming together, isn't he? I know. And you know, if you imagine the eyes mm. there and everything. So, um, so as I say, you you would stitch that. I found a curved needle. If you've got access to a curved needle, that helps. Of course, yeah. Um, but a straight needle. Again, mm. because he's nice and soft, it's just easier to pass and that through. And the linen's soft. So. But you'll see that that gives more character than just having a straight mm. ear. Just curve it yeah. round slightly and mm. use your pins just to hold it in position. Okay, so that's, that's the head, really, um, and the ears. So pop those to one side. So then we'll come on to the arm. So we have um, the lovely checked gingham and you'll have um, this, the palm, they call it the palm, so you'll cut two of those, you'll sew those together just along there and then you'll put the actual arm and that piece together. You may find you need to just trim it round, depending on oh, um, okay. you know how accurately you've cut it, how accurately. Right. So don't worry. There's nothing wrong. Mm. All uh, all you do is just cut that round, and you've again got your um, opening there to turn it. So you'll mm. stitch from the opening all the way round, all the way round, all the way round like that. Do your um, locking stitch. Top and bottom of the um, the aqua journey. bundle has now sold out. Aww. So you can no more aqua bears. No more Barney bears. Yeah, no more. <laughs> this one could be Lily <laughs> Linen Bear. Yes, but there are the other three bundles are still there. Yeah. But do check them out if you want them. So um, you'll sewn all the way round. You'll turn that all the way round, and then you'll have. So we've sewn it all the way round, turned it. And then, as if by magic, we've got one <laughs> got a whole stitched. Arm. We've got a whole Beautiful. arm stitched. So again, you've got your opening there. Now, this is where, please take time, don't overstuff <laughs> the top of the arm. You okay. want to be able to squeeze the arm together so that it meets, really. So there's yes. a tiny, tiny little bit of stuffing in between it there. So we've closed that edge and... Okay. Obviously, there's a pair of arms. Mm. <laughs> yes. Close that edge, mm -hmm. and you can once when you do all the closing and everything, move your stuffing around so that it's you know nice yes, and so evenly. You don't want the button to disappear too much, and if no. it's overstuffed, you won't see it. No, that's right. Yeah, and that's also, um, you can put a little bit more. You can see the difference between the top and the bottom. So you yeah. can see the palm of the bear mm -hmm. is quite firm, and then the top of the um, arm is not so firm. So that's the arms. I'm whizzing through here now. Um, right, <laughs> the leg. Um, so again, we have the opening there. So you'll sew from the bottom, just hoping, from the bottom of the foot up to the opening. Do your locking stitch there. Leave a gap, locking stitch all the way round down to the bottom. Now this particular one, I would pinking shear 
just around the curves just to try and right, get that. Right, okay, to help nice, it really ease yeah, better. Yeah. And do you remember at the beginning when I said, oh, the pad of the foot? Yes, yeah. It is slightly different. It's wider at the top and narrow at the bottom. Oh, okay. So the narrow at the bottom is the heel. So that's the actual um, bottom of the foot. And this will be the heel of your um So it's bear. worth sort of labelling it or putting a pin in yes. or something so you yeah. remember that. And then again, use loads and loads and loads Those of pins, pins yeah. <laughs> um, until you feel confident and happy about what you're doing. I think that's the difference. Is yeah, but I always do with things like that. And in fact, yeah. if it's a really tight curve like that, I'd probably tack it as well. Yes, you because, can tack um, it. Yeah. It's hard when you're trying to ease it around and get the pins out and put it under the yeah. machine. Sometimes, yeah. no, actually, hand tacking will the be the time perfect. it takes to tack it makes yeah. it easier rather than battling with pins that you've put in yes. the wrong way. So you'll um, put the sole into the bottom of the foot because you've machined yes. all the way around and left the, that bottom bit open. You will mm. carefully pin that in position. Again, don't worry if you find that your um, fabric is a little bit bigger. Um, what you can do is <laughs> because, again, the fabric's nice, loosely woven, you can actually ease it around the curves okay. and take your time when you're on the machine, do a few stitches, lift your foot up, few more stitches, yeah. lift your foot up, a few more stitches, um, do it like that until you actually have your the um, sole of the foot there. And then as if by magic. <gasps> We've got, <laughs> that's amazing. How many legs and arms have you well, got? Well, like I say, this was just half a metre of fabric and I got so enough you, so you've for got, all yeah, of it. You've got lots, so, we've only yeah. got one minute left. So yeah. Okay, so you've done your um, legs, you've closed the back, you've closed the seam there, nice and soft mm. again. So nice and soft there. And then what you'll do, the head is attached. And again, what I tend to do is actually pin that in position and do the ladder stitch. Right. So you'll okay. do the ladder stitch all the way around. Mm. And please, with the head, you want it nice and secure. Match your seams under the chin there. So I guess and if you sewed round twice, you'd be safe. Sew round twice, even three times. Oh, okay. Don't worry too much about your stitching because you're going to put a bow over the stitching. Right. So you, you won't see that so much. And then you'll take your legs and you'll take your arms. Mm. And with, um, I don't know, did we have the wooden buttons? Don't think we did. Anyway. Yes, we have. So you've yeah. just... So your wooden buttons, I'll show you on the finished one, but you'll be stitching yeah, like right the way through. Good. Let's um, show you on the actual bit. Okay, just shows very quickly. Yeah, so can you see that's where it's not so... Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And then and you just sew them together. Yeah, with sew the them together. All the way through. Um, do it quite a few times. Well, that's lovely. Thanks so much, Carl. That's so okay. we've, oh, oh, we've run out of a time. Um, when are you back with us? Um, 26. 7th of October. Oh, OK. Yes, okay. only a couple well, of weeks. So. Only a couple of weeks. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. No, that's Hope you lovely. managed to finish Thank off you. your 500 bears <laughs> <laughs> with all of his legs. But, you know, you've done a wonderful job because the aqua bears sold out. So thank you so much. No problem. No problem. See you again soon. And thank you very much. Um, the book has sold out as well. And the aqua bundle has sold out. So we've got the cream bundle left but there is less than half the stock of left of this remember you get half a meter of the cream linen fabric and half a meter of the blue woven gingham not printed you also get the skein of brown stranded cotton and the soft toy filling um then there's the denim bundle which is the half a meter of the denim linen linen fabric um half a meter of this sort of twining print fabric which is a a cream with a very sort of soft beigey green print on it. it goes really teams very well with the denim because it really contrasts again you get your stranded cotton and your soft toy filling and then a sneaky extra one which is called the have we called it the calico bundle or the red one um you've got half a meter of this lovely calico which works really well for the bear because that's very sort of traditional natural bear and then with this lovely pop of red so you've got you know and it is it is the gingham is very traditional sort of school isn't it so i think they work really well together and the brown stranded cotton and the um soft toy filling um don't forget about our split pay. So um, you know, anything that costs over £150, what's £149.99, um, 
you can buy in three split payments. So if you go to the, have a look on the screen now, if you go to the website and go to sort high to low, and that will give you all the items that are part of split pay. Remember if it's, if it's only over 700 pounds, 799 I have to remember this, then you get it split over across five months. If it's over 149 pounds, then it's split over three months. Tomorrow we've got the adjuster forms in which come into that. Remember we did the cordless electric scissors this morning, that they would go into that as well. And the sewing machines, which have proved really popular because I know a lot of you really want to have a new sewing machine, but giving you that extra option that you've been asking us for ages for makes a big difference, I know. So we have got tomorrow, John Scott's back, hooray. Oh, I should be watching, he's brilliant, isn't he? We've missed him so much and I know how much you love him. Um, but he is, he's back with us again tomorrow. So eight o'clock, he's got fun fabrics. Nine o'clock is adjust a form and tools. Remember, adjust a form is in the split play and John will show you brilliantly how you use them and why you use them. Um, at 10 and 11 o'clock, we've got Gary's back with the Juki and the Overlocker, which is fantastic because they are amazing machines. And he is a joy to watch because he is such... He just knows so much. I mean, he's an engineer. He was part of the design and the build of these machines. So, you know, I would have a think about your questions. Get Send them into the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com. And he's brilliant because when I, I was on air with him a couple of weeks ago and he, oh, he just knew the answer to some really random, very specific questions that I thought he was never going to know that and it was really good. Um, and he's on 11 terms. So it's going to be a great show tomorrow because John's always great value, isn't he? Um, and then there will be a repeat uh, at 12 o'clock of, is it yes, of the gadgets that we did this morning. So if you want to see um, the electric scissors, all my favourite bias, bias binding maker, I can't believe I haven't got one of those, um, do watch that back. I am back next Monday, actually. Same time, same place, but next week. <laughs> Not this week or next week, but um, you've got John in tomorrow and Wednesday and Saturday, so that's going to be great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Please do watch back at the 8 o'clock hour and um, I will see you in a week's time. Hello there, very good.